three sunny day in South Florida, the Buffalo Bills, Miami Dolphins. A familiar scenario, tied for first place late in the season. Each with nine and four records, a sellout crowd of 75,000. And for Miami, a win today and a victory by their friends to the north, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Raiders would give them a playoff spot. But obviously, both are very much a part of the future playoff picture. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg with Bob Trumpy. We've talked about the injuries to quarterbacks, how that will impact this game. But it still may boil down to Thurman Thomas against the Miami defense. Yeah, we've, we've kind of skirted around the edges. The epicenter of the offense here for the Buffalo Bills is number 34. When he can carry the ball, catch the ball at will, as he usually does against the Miami Dolphins, they are unstoppable. The last time these people in South Florida saw Thurman Thomas and the Buffalo Bills, he had 166 total yards in the AFC Championship game, 96 running. When he's around 100 yards rushing, Dick, it's a lot. The Buffalo Bills win. Well, and you heard O.J. Simpson earlier that uh, Thomas, when he heard the news that John offered all was not playing today big smile broke out well buffalo needs thurman thomas for a lot of reasons part of it with offered all out is to protect jim kelly i mean i think there's an absolute green light here for the buffalo offense to run the ball and run the ball until miami can stop them the other green light in this game i think is on the side of the miami dolphins with gail gilbert as the backup frank reich hurt it is a green light for the miami defense to blitz Jim Kelly and try to get him out of the ball game and let's see what Gail Gilbert can play. There's a lot to unfold here early in the game, Dick. Andre Reed, the brilliant wide receiver, the all-time pass catcher in Buffalo Bills history, out a couple of games with a painful dislocated elbow. We talked to him yesterday. He said, I just can't think about it, but in watching him, he cannot fully extend that right arm. He's not taking a hit in practice, obviously. We'll see how he holds up today. Another key for Buffalo. Miami dominated this series during the 70s. They were 20 and 0, but the Bills of late have won all but three of the last 15 and have won six of seven here in Miami. Of course, that's familiar territory for Jim Kelly. Kelly playing his college ball down at the Orange Bowl, University of Miami, Don Shula, who's had a, well, as he said yesterday, what a great year. The, past George Hallis, named Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year. He said, but I want it to come in a year when I get back to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I, you know, Dick, when you go back to his undefeated season back in the 70s, it was pretty much uh, send him out there and let him play. With the quarterback shuffling he's had to do, with the injuries on his defense, when he looks back on this season, if this team does succeed in the playoffs and to the Super Bowl, it's got to be one of his best coaching jobs ever. It'll be one of the biggest crowds in uh, oh, Joe Robbie uh, Stadium history and the young life of this beautiful structure. 75,000 every seat sold, including the back rows of the luxury boxes as Stoyanovich tees it up. Don Beebe and Russell Copeland are deep for Buffalo. So much at stake. Not only the hopes of the playoffs, John offered all boy just plagued by injuries, hurting inside. He's uh, just the hamstring would not respond. You see Lewis Oliver on the left of your screen. He too out and perhaps for the season. They hope he might be back if Miami makes the playoffs. Has a ankle and fracture of the foot. Dan Marino, of course, the Dolphin, hurt early in the year, but uh, the backup quarterbacks, Mitchell, 3-1, and one, and DeBerg, 2-2, two and two, filling the void, if you can. Buffalo's had trouble all season in kickoff returns, averaging under 16 yards. They're in the bottom tier of the NFL, 25th in returns, and Stoyanovich gets it going. and the K-Gun offense for Buffalo. And uh, their numbers have been reduced in the last couple of years. Fina, Parker, Hall, the pro bowler, Davis, the house Ballard, the front five. Kelly with Thurman Thomas will be watching 34. Brooks, Beebe, and Reed, the three wide receivers in the K-Gun, and Metzelars with 52 catches, having his best year. Kelly 
to Thomas. Who else? And Thomas breaking a tackle to the 36 and a first down. 11 yards against the white jersey Dolphins who read this way. Cross, Klingbeil, Golick, and Coleman, the front four. Hollier and Cox, two linebackers as they go with a five-man secondary. Vesti, Jackson, J.B. Brown, Jarvis Williams, Stephen Braggs, and Daryl Malone. Braggs and Malone for the injured Lewis Oliver and Troy Vincent. Larry Webster with the tackle for Miami. Thurman Thomas with a couple of yards. Daryl Malone, number 47, been with Miami two years. He says no one knows my name. They call him 47. They don't know his name. His first NFL start, Dick. Second down and eight underneath to Thomas. So every play has gone to Thomas thus far, and he's a couple of yards shy of a first down as Brian Cox makes the tackle. Added uh, responsibilities for the linebacker Cox in that offered all who calls most of the defensive signals is out, so Cox has that responsibility as well. Yeah, he told us it takes away from his emotion. All the people in Buffalo know how emotional he can be. John Offerdahl, the hamstring, he hurt it on Friday. Thought he was going to be able to play, but told Shuley yesterday, I can't go. Two tight ends as McKellar comes in. Third and a long yard. Kenneth Davis riding over the pile, and he almost bolted to the end zone. He's to the 50-yard line, like riding a wave, a surfer play for Davis. Kind of looked like Dick Fosbury there if he'd have turned over on his back a little bit. Excellent block by Carwell Gardner, 35 up front. He gets 90, Coleman going back. And you're right, Davis just rides on top. It's Coleman who finally gets a hold of the jersey to get him down. Davis hanging for six. First down at the 49 of Miami. Underneath Andre Reid who takes his first hit after a gain of about eight as Vesty Jackson makes the stop. This is an important completion and reception by Andre Reid. Vesty Jackson is the guy who is taking the place of Troy Vincent, but in the nickel package, he plays on the slot. That's Andre Reid. First hit he's taken on that elbow. Did all right. Second down and two, and Thomas to the 40-yard line will be shy of the first down. Brian Cox with another tackle. Dick, uh, we got to go back to the first game in Buffalo. Miami probably had its best defensive performance of the year. Three sacks against Buffalo, two interceptions, held Thurman Thomas to just 46 yards, but even Tom Olivadotti admits the reason they were so successful is the offense just controlled the ball. They had it for almost 38 minutes. And the Bills here going into a huddle, which is unusual on third and short. Davis and Gardner in the eye. Kelly to Davis. He's got the first down and more. Boy, what a second back he is behind Thurman Thomas and Jim Richard, the veteran, throwing the block. Davis with 16 yards and a first down inside the 25. Well, it helps to have a young offensive lineman like John Pena who can pull all the way around here. Good lead block, and then you'll see Davis. This is a this is an offense that when they run the ball, you got to make the tackle. And the tackle is missed there by 42. You just can't do that against Davis and Thurman Thomas. Now on first down, it's Thomas. Thurman Thomas hit in the backfield and dropped by Jarvis Williams. The strong safety coming up to the line of scrimmage to make the hit. Something that will be noted by Kelly. Yes. Uh, approaching the line of scrimmage, but ball control here by the Buffalo offense to start this game. They've had such miserable problems starting games in the second half. Just one touchdown and one field goal in 12 games, Dick, in the initial drive. Kelly sends Brooks right. Reed slotted left. Lots of time, and Metzelars is open at the one. The big tight end from Wabash College, Indiana. 22 yards. Williams with a tackle. First and goal. He runs the out and up. Metzelars translates into the bricklayer. But he has turned out to be a heck of a receiver for the Buffalo Bills this year. Normally he catches it standing still, not moving, but a huge target at 6'7". Those numbers, his best throughout his career. That was his 53rd catch. Kelly is four for four on this opening drive. This is impressive. Four shots from the one. 
Davis. Touchdown, Buffalo. The most impressive drive by the Bills. And they pushed him all over the place on that opening drive. Did you see the bow in that defensive line? Offer Dahl could not have helped this. Watch the bow on the left side of the offensive line, just shoving people back. He's in the end zone before there's any contact. Again, excellent job blocking on Klingbeil. Hollier, number 50, gets there late. Oh, Fina with an excellent block. Boy, that was pretty. Now here is Gail Gilbert as the holder. He's not uh, performed this function other than preseason. And it's, it's wide to the left. So Gilbert and that uh, uh, nothing else planted a seed in the mind of that whole articulation between snapper, holder, and kicker. And the kick goes wide left. Dick, this is on the kicker. Gilbert does a good job. Look how early Christie is. He was very, very early to that ball. There is always timing. Look how close, how quickly he starts. And he hooks it left. That's the side the laces were facing. It's 6 nothing. So you think driving an Oldsmobile 88 is like sitting in your living room? High percent as a center at Wabash, and there to get the rebound, and the touchdown goes to Davis as Metzelars set it up. Here comes O.J. McDuffie, the rookie from Penn State, who took a punt back for a touchdown against Pittsburgh on Monday night. He's toppled at the 27-yard line. Let's go back to the Metzelars catch. Here's Metzelars. He runs the... He runs the out and up at the top of the screen. He moves the out. Hollier, number 50, is the man underneath. Kelly throws a beautiful pass. Jarvis Williams has to make the, 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 the catch. I mean, it, I don't know why you can forget a guy who is 6'7", 6'8", 52 catches for the season. you got to cover him, and then Davis goes in. Davis with his fourth touchdown of the season. And now Scott Mitchell returns after the shoulder separation. He comes out throwing and goes to the sidelines incomplete. Intended for Mark Ingram, broken up by Nate Odoms. Odoms having a Pro Bowl year. The Dolphins set it up this way with Webb, Sims, Dellenbach, Widener, Buffalo native, and Heller, the ex-Eagle. Mitchell returns as quarterback Terry Kirby, the rookie from Virginia. Byers, the veteran, acquired from the Eagles. Fryer and Ingram outside and Keith Jackson, the tight end. O.J. McDuffie and Tony Martin come in when they go four wide. Second and ten for Mitchell. He set ten NCAA records at Utah. to the 31 yard line again of four Odoms again with the stop Dick last week in watching uh, Pittsburgh play Miami nine times Pittsburgh had blocked guys in on the quarterback unblocked there were two of them a Bennett came from one side tally got in Mitchell's face so it looks like Buffalo not really a blitzing team uh, look closely at that Pittsburgh tape thought they might be able to uh, just unseat Mitchell a little bit get him a little excited there's Walt Corey the defensive coordinator and Tally must have said, who is that guy back there? It's the first time in 15 years, college and pro, that Dan Marino wasn't the quarterback when he's been on the field against Miami or in the old days, West Virginia at Pittsburgh. Timeout called by Mitchell. The Schick ST with the one push cleaning bar gives men a closer shave than the three leading disposables. And then say it delivers a safer shave from the three leading disposables. Oh. So, for a better overall shave than the three leading disposables, oh. it's the ST from Schick. We're changing the face of shaving. So, you're buying a new car. Well, before you spend all that money, why not make a free call? 1 800 LSS Wins. When you do, we'll send you a free video showing how well the Oldsmobile 88 LSS luxury sedan stacks up against cars costing thousands more. It's your money, but fortunately, it's also a free call. Hi, is this space taken? No. Then I'll sit down. You want a Bud Light? Not yet. Hey, hey, wait a minute. 
minute. That's my Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. How about a little help here? <clears throat> the NFL on NBC is brought to you by Oldsmobile. By Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. By the Schick ST Razor, we're changing the face of shaving. And by the people at Nike, who encourage you to just do it. Joining us today over Joe Robbie Stadium, Airship Shamu, the SeaWorld blimp. Uh, Shamu represents the SeaWorld Marine Life Parks here in Florida, as well as California, Texas, and Ohio. Well, an early timeout by... Miami, the third play of the game for them, and they've already spent a timeout. That may have something to do with Doug Peterson, who was waved, gives way to Hugh Millen, who does the hand signals into the quarterback from the sideline. Mitchell pointing out the defenders, anticipating a blitz, and Bruce Smith is in on top of him before the ball is snapped. Smith having another great season for Buffalo. And there might have been former years when Bruce Smith would just hammer that quarterback. But uh, Bruce Smith, uh, I think, has learned. Offside, number 78 defense, moving unabated toward the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. That'll make a third and one. Howard Rowe is today's referee. Uh, you see those numbers. They've done an excellent job on Bruce Smith, but they run play action at him. They slide to him. They very seldom allow Richmond Webb over there on Bruce Smith by himself or any tackle by himself. But Scott Mitchell said it and it was almost like an echo coming out of Dan Marino. We always know where Bruce Smith always. is. Always. Yeah. You see him pointing a lot. They like to point at Bruce Smith. Five yard penalty, third and one. First running play. Byers, he smothered right at the line of scrimmage, but they give a generous spot out to the 37-yard line. That may be enough for a first down. And we just mentioned Bruce Smith. He knifed down there to assist on the tackle. This guy at 265, 70 pounds, so quick. He goes inside Webb, and when he hits you, you stay hit. I mean, <laughs> he doesn't miss many tackles. Watch him again down the line. Takes on the outside shoulder, is still able to pursue down the line and assist on the tackle with Patton number 53. Terry Kirby. And the rookie is out to the 44. May have fumbled. The ball was down, but uh, apparently he was already on the ground. Patton came up with it for Buffalo. Dick, he ripped it out of his arms. Kirby, who's had some problems with fumbles this year. There's no question when you watch tape and you see, especially a rookie, give up the ball. You try to assist on the fumble. Watch him rip this ball away. That is a fumble. That's not unlike the fumble uh, created by Smith of Dallas yesterday against the Jets. This was, uh, speaking of Dallas, Thanksgiving Day. And it's usually because he's trying to do too much. It's that second and third effort that puts him in a precarious spot. That's up the middle to the 48 of Miami first down as we go to our first visit in New York. Dick, just as Buffalo scored with the opening kickoff in Miami, so too did the Houston Oilers in Pittsburgh on a Gary Brown 38-yard catch from Moon. Then a few plays later, O'Donnell picked off by Bo Orlando, and Orlando goes in from 38 yards out, and suddenly it's Houston 14, Pittsburgh nothing early. Back to Dick and Bob. Wow, a stunning early score as the Oilers go for nine in a row. Mitchell sidelines it to Higgs, rarely used as a receiver, and the former Kentucky star has nearly ten more. Dick, I wonder if his substitution is related to the ball being ripped out of Kirby's hands right in front of Don Chula, right in front of the Dolphins bench. Last time these two teams met, Higgs rushed for 77 yards. Since then, Kirby has emerged as the more versatile back. He does run the ball very well, and he catches it. You're right, it's a rare reception, but Shula saw that ball ripped out of Kirby's hand. They're going to give him a rest. Leads the Dolphins in uh, receptions and leads all rookies in the league in reception yards. And on second and inches, a first down as Byers plows to the 39. So trailing 7-0. Miami, aided by the Bruce Smith offside penalty, moves uh, deeper into Bill's territory. And when you're a coach, you certainly like to answer a drive with a drive. And Miami is doing that beautifully right here. Ingram left, Fryer right, the tight end Jackson on the left side, Fires out on the wing left. down the middle 
Jackson. The tight end Jackson. First down at the 19. made the tackle. Darby playing for the injured Mark Kelso at safety. Watch 50. Guganius, he's the man who has coverage in the middle of the field on Jackson. This is a double rotation zone. Mitchell makes a beautiful read there, Dick. First time he sees the double rotation, that is corners up, safeties out. You're looking at the middle. That's the first big read for Scott Mitchell today. 21 yards on the play. Hicks. To the 15-yard line, a gain of four, Darrell Talley and Cornelius Bennett on the stop. Pat was there as well. Dolphins come with both guards pulling, but watch Darrell Talley come all the way over on this side to assist on the tackle. These are very active guards that Miami has. 69 is Sims, 60 is Widener, lead block by Byers, but a beautiful job done by the Buffalo defense pursuing Buffalo. Took the kickoff 10 plays and scored. This is the 10th play of the Miami drive. Into the end zone. Man open. Ingram. Did he get it? No signal yet. Touchdown. Former Giant Mark Ingram from Michigan State, his fourth touchdown of the season. And because of the missed extra point, Don Shula's Dolphins have a chance for the lead. Ingram right on the sidelines. One official did not give a signal. The other from upfield called it a touchdown. Stoyanovich for the lead. Mitchell the holder. Dolphin seven, Bill six. Ingram with man coverage. That's all he's got to beat. It's Mickey Washington with him. Ingram runs a beautiful corner route, and Mitchell puts it right on the money. This is a young man with a great deal of confidence and a very live arm. In his fourth year, didn't play this first two years, just had a couple of passes last year. But uh, showing that uh, he's got the talent as he replaces Dan Marino. Russell Copeland for Buffalo. He's got some room at the 20 and out to the 26-yard line where he is drilled by veteran Cliff Odom. Ingram the touchdown maker, but it was a tight end play that set up the score. Tight ends are big here today. There is no question. You're going to see the, the man coverage here and the deep safeties. Mitchell makes the right read. He's got to be looking down the middle, and you see Jackson get by the linebacker, Goganius. Beautiful completion. When you can beat that coverage with a tight end down the middle, you're golden. Now it's Kelly and Buffalo. Thurman Thomas, not much there. Marco Coleman, Dwight Hollier in on the stop. Interestingly, the game starts with Kelly taking Buffalo 75 yards in 10 plays. Mitchell answers 73 yards in 10 plays. Very similar drives, tight end catches, setting up touchdowns. Now, Buffalo's turn with 418 left in the quarter. Whoa! Kelly to the sidelines to Reed, and Reed is free on the sidelines and into Miami territory at the 47 before Stephen Braggs can get him out. Flag is down. Dick, Marco Coleman, number 90, drilled Jim Kelly right in the back. We talked about Kelly must be protected, and Coleman was all around. Brian Cox now getting in it with it. Jim Kelly. Well, you know, anytime there's a squabble, Brian Cox is going to be a part of the picture for Miami. In fact, they told us yesterday, thinking about Christmas, quite the contradiction to what we've just seen, but he is going to host the Christmas party the 24th. Miami will be flying out to play San Diego on Christmas Day. Personal foul on number 90 defense. A late hit on the quarterback. 15-yard penalty. Down. The penalty on Marco Coleman. You're going to see him come from 
he's untouched. See, that's kind of a designer sack by the Miami Dolphins. And I didn't think he had an extra step to get to the quarterback. Wow, if that was a uh, late hit, we should have seen a lot more flags, Absolutely. Uh, shouldn't we? Uh, remember, pass protection. And now another 15 for unsportsmanlike conduct. No, this is the 15 they're marking off. Now they're marking it after the play by Reed that took him to the 48 now. Uh, to the 31 yard line. And Dick, I don't think there's any doubt that Miami's going to try its best to put as much hitting on Jim Kelly in this game as they can. Thurman Thomas. He's to the 27 yard line, a pickup of four. Jeff Cross down at the bottom of the pile. Kind of lost in everything was the beautiful reception by Andre Reed. That's Webster. Larry Webster and uh, the Buffalo Bills blocker pointing at him. Knowing that he was injured, 79 in white. Here's Reed in the slot with Vesty Jackson, runs the out pattern, and then Vesty Jackson misses the tackle. In this league, Dick, these skill position athletes, so talented, you cannot miss that first tackle. Webster, the second year defensive tackle from Maryland, being attended, and we have a break at the 344 mark. Recently, Oldsmobile pitted its 88 LSS against Acura Legend L and Lexus ES300. Well, actually, no. In fact, if you call this toll-free number, 1-800-LSS. Stadium, they're attending to Larry Webster. Marv Levy in his 12th season as the head man of the Bills. Three straight Super Bowls, and you look at their points two years ago. 28-6 was their average per game. It drops by almost five last year and down to 18-2. That's 10.4 differential, and it's not uh, coincidental, I suppose, that Ted Marchabrota oh, yeah. left two years ago to take the Indianapolis job. He was the offensive coordinator. Dick, that, that's an excellent point. Whenever there's Jim Schaffner, the offensive coordinator now, and it's really no criticism of Schaffner, but the guy who seems to put in the offense always seems to call it better and Schaffner is running March Broda's offense and it's an offense that he's got to got to get up to speed with and and frankly the Buffalo Bills under Ted March Broda and Jim Schaffner have always been kind of self-sustaining Jim Kelly goes to the sideline talks to Frank Reich Gil, Gail Gilbert they read defenses he really doesn't go to the coaching staff yeah talking about Jim uh, Jim Kelly uh, the quarterbacks that have influenced him pros who are his coaches Included Earl Morrill, the former uh, Miami Dolphin quarterback when he was at the University of Miami for four years. Uh, Morrill was his coach, quarterback coach. Look at the natural gas quarterback efficiency ratings. Joe Montana will be seeing him uh, next Saturday, Christmas Day, against the Oilers. John Elway, second. Boomer, third. O'Donnell. Kelly in the fifth spot, dominated by AFC quarterbacks. DeBerg is 10th. There's Steve DeBerg standing on the sideline. Here's Webster being helped to the sideline. See if we can pick up exactly what happened. He is number 79. And he gets his leg collapsed underneath him. And then the entire world falls on him. So we hope he's all right. I, I did not pick up who was in there in his place. Is it Golik? Or is it Jeff Hunter? 90 Golik is in there. From Philadelphia, the former Notre Damer is the right leg injured Larry Webster. Mike Golick, continuing a tradition started by his brother Bob, calls his dad, Lewis, every Sunday morning just before the game to say hello to get pumped up. And his dad who played seven years in the CFL and has been the mentor of two very successful sons. Thurman Thomas rambles to the 24, shy of the first down, Jeff Hunter. Makes this up, number 97. That was a nice job by the off linebacker catching up to this counter run by Thurman Thomas, which is a play they have featured since Mark Chabrota got there, Bresnahan got there, and Thurman Thomas got there. Thomas averaging only two yards a carry thus far. No one in the backfield. Kelly to Metzelars. That will be a first down inside the 20. Jarvis Williams with the stop. Now Buffalo's found something. They're getting Hollier in coverage, the linebacker on Metzelars. Watch Hollier. He's the guy with the tight end. When the backfield empties, the, the defensive back goes with Thomas. Hollier's left in coverage. Hollier's a nice linebacker. He's excellent against the run, still learning to play against the pass. As soon as we get a full medical report on the condition of Webster, we'll 
pass it along to you. Meanwhile, Jim Kelly, talk about efficiency. He's perfect six for six in this opening quarter. Throw, throw. Looking to throw. And it'll be incomplete. Unfortunate it was not on target because Vesty Jackson was not fooled. He would have been right there for the interception. Thomas is deceiving when he runs the ball. He is not deceiving when he runs the ball with the intention to throw. I mean, from the first step, you could see what was happening. Here's Reed. He runs the pattern. Thomas goes out here. But as you said, Miami not fooled a bit. You got to disguise it a little bit. Besty Jackson able to catch up to it and knock it away. Third and ten. Thomas. Slowed up by Brian Cox. He made the play, and then Jeff Cross finished the work. That'll force the field goal unit on for Buffalo. Or will it? Brings up. Check that third down. Third down. The Marcus had shown third before the last play. This is the third down and 11. Now, you were talking about Brian Cox a little earlier. He told us that his best Christmas, he and the entire family got boxing gloves, and his parents said any family arguments, you go out in the garage and settle them. Uh, that may have forever imprinted Brian Cox. He had to battle his way out of East St. Louis. Kelly. To Brooks. Bill Brooks had it for a moment, but J.B. Brown able to get a hand in there, along with Stephen Braggs. Now the field goal unit for Buffalo. You know, Dick, if there is a difference in this offense, Bill Brooks, great hands, excellent patterns, but he doesn't have the speed of James Lofton, the guy who used to wear that number and play that spot. Kelly told us, we have traded consistency for deep speed. 37-yard attempt. Remember the extra point missed. Dale Gilbert, the new holder. This one is boom through by Christie. 38 yards officially. And Buffalo leads 9-7. A minute 20 seconds left in this quarter. Opening quarter, a battle for first place in the AFC East. And now, a look ahead to next weekend on Sunday. NBC Sports, a doubleheader, begins at 12.30 Eastern. The Jets-Buffalo will be a major game. Raiders will be at Green Bay for another. The Colts-New England, a third early game at 4 o'clock. You'll see Pittsburgh-Seattle or Cleveland against the Rams. Worth seeing the Rams just to see that young Jerome Bettis. What a year he's having. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, that offensive line he plays behind is an all-pro or a, or a Hall of Fame offensive line. He's gotten an awful lot of yards by breaking that first tackle and then, and then making a small run into a big run. Andre Reed on the sideline getting in front of the fan. Mike Williams and O.J. McDuffie ready for Christie's kick. They're X-raying the right hip of Larry Webster is the report we've received. I think they want to keep it away from him. McDuffie with two punt return touchdowns this year. Let's try the other guy. Which means Christie would be kicking to his right where Williams is posted and this one won't matter. All the way to the back line of the end zone and Miami will begin from the 20. Scott Mitchell successfully leading the Dolphins on their first drive and Mitchell in orange the Berg in black they've each started four games subbing for Dan Marino and look at the difference Mitchell 27 points per game in his four and the Berg 10 points a game less now Steve the Berg had big numbers yes. down in the red zone couldn't punch it in but again Don Shula could not have been Absolutely. more open in his praise he used every superlative to describe the bird Mitchell well protected now goes long Ingram almost intercepted by Matt Darby Darby who has one interception this year a very big one it came at the end of the Dallas victory to save the win it looks like Miami's choice here Dick is is to impress upon Buffalo we are going to throw the ball deep I mean, they've started with a couple of very deep patterns to start each series here. And Mitchell's arm certainly looks fine. And if nothing else, Buffalo has got to say, well, Mitchell is healthy. We can't 
just protect the uh, the short stuff. Ooh, he's rattled at the 24, a pickup of four. Bruce Smith, as you said. There's just uh, no forward progress. Well, 178 gets you. Uh, it's, it's seldom you find a guy who does so much so well. And take on the first hit and then pursue down the line is something Bruce Smith has always been able to do. Just unbelievable strength. Like 4 or 5% body fat for a guy who's 270. And then the other thing is, he rooms on the road with Daryl Talley. I mean, that, that's got to make you something <laughs> different. <laughs> Four wide receivers for Mitchell. Just does escape and throws incomplete. Closest was Terry Kirby. Both tackles, Hanson and Wright, pressuring Mitchell. So the punting unit on for Miami. He was flushed from the pocket. They moved uh, Bruce Smith to the right offensive side. But just to follow up on one of your points, uh, Bob Trumpy, that was a play where DeBerg would have been sacked. Yes. Mitchell has enough escapability uh, to at least uh, get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. Dale Hatcher, bad kick. He had a terrible drop on the ball. And this one's going to... Oh, hit Jasper! And it's a live ball, and Miami says they have it at the 44. No! Buffalo recovers. Wait a minute now, wait a minute. They haven't untangled yet. It is, it is my, yeah. Steve Tasker, the all-pro special teams player. It accidentally hits him in the back. Official first point at Buffalo's direction and then uh, change him on. Hit the receiving team. Recovered by the kicking team. First down. Dwight Hollier recovered it. And uh, Levy upset. Watch 89. See, he's about 10 yards in front of the receiver. Hits him right on the leg. And then it bounces off his elbow. And everybody after Thanksgiving Day pays a lot more attention to balls hit after they're touched. So but it's a bad kick by Hatcher that becomes a beautiful moment for Miami because it was so short. Tasker, not expecting the ball to be that shy, has it uh, accidentally strike him. So first down inside the 45 of Buffalo. Nothing there for Higgs, smothered by Blue in the final seconds of the opening quarter. Keith Koganius led the charge. End of one at Joe Robbie. The Bills nine, the Dolphins seven. The Tasker doesn't even know it hits him. It hits him right on the left elbow. And luckily Miami and as do the Buffalo Bills. I mean, the return man, Copeland, is trying to motion people out of the way. But Miami comes up with a recovery. A tasker in that predicament with a kick 32 yards was about 10 yards short of yes. what you would expect and then was handling a man he's trying to block and the ball hits his elbow. One of the uh, great special teamers, tasker, but it gives Miami the chance. Second and 10 now as we open the second quarter. The Bills leading 9-7. to seven. Mitchell at the 44 of uh, Buffalo. And his first takeaway in three games. The quick out. Good job by Fryer to get a couple of more yards as he uh, kicks out of the grasp of Mickey Washington. Washington playing the corner. James Williams has been uh, benched by Buffalo. Uh, benched is a quiet, kind word. Again, Mitchell, excellent fundamentals in throwing it out there. And, and Washington, you, you can't give a, a receiver like Irving Fryer that much cushion because Irving Fryer is probably better after he catches it than he is before he catches it. Cincinnati with a lead. That's uh, always news. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you'd be interested. Thank you. You're a Queen City guy. Terry Kirby in a first step. Marcus Patton the tackle at the 30. This young man has had an extraordinary season. You know, he's the guy with the blurry eye, the right eye. But he was a shooting guard for the University of Virginia. Wanted us to know that. Excellent receiver. Uh, did a lot of catching for the University of Virginia. Shula loves him, but he had the ball stripped away from him. And Shula hates to put the ball on the ground. Sammy Smith being evidence of that. Ooh. The number one pick. He's out of here. From the 29-yard line. Reverse. Reverse. Oops, falling this flyer, and that'll cost 
the Dolphins uh, six yards Bruce Smith right there what didn't appear to have much uh, on it anyway oh, but Smith reads this perfectly when he sees the guard 69 pull in front of him that's his indication something's coming I mean you know he is a big strong guy and he's probably been criticized by people for taking plays off he studies a lot of football he knows when a guard pulls his way we know what's happening here you're blocking me inside yep. that means something's going outside and uh, his very presence forced Meyer to kind of lose his footing Mitchell incomplete just tried to shoot a little past the buyers there to save some uh, ground. It wouldn't have been good for much anyway, so it'll be third down and 16. Well, they don't want him running around like that. There's Steve Kat Tasker standing on the sideline, hoping for the best, hoping the defense can stop him. The ball hits him. It's certainly not his fault, but he probably feels responsible for this drive extension by the Miami Dolphins. Right now, the Dolphins looking at a 52-yard field goal. So Mitchell, if not a first down on third and 16, would like to get at least 10 here and help out Stojanovic. Tony Martin in motion. And Fryer gets just about that, 10, 11 yards. And here comes Stojanovic. Nate Odoms made the stop and saved the first down. Crossing pattern by Irving Fryer. Underneath the coverage, Odom's very quick to catch up to him. Odom's has seen enough of Roaring Fryer in his career. And there's Steve Tasker. He knows, well, they're going to get a field goal attempt here. It's going to be around 42 yards by Stojanovic, who's been the subject of one of the uh, commercials where they're kicking a lot yes. tougher ones. That kick from the blimp, I still think that one was wide. <laughs> the top of the blimp uh, field goal try. <laughs> but he'll try it. This is for the lead, 10-9. It'll be inside the 42, so a 41-yarder. Run your leg, and the Dolphins reclaim the lead, 10-9. Victim of an accident, Tasker, and it costs Buffalo three. Scott Mitchell on the hold, an excellent job, and this is uh, in-your-face football. You score, we score. Mitchell spins the laces. Very nice. 12-04 remaining in the first half. Tasker's hopes in vain. It's Miami by one. Stoyanovich, former Indiana Hoosier. With the lead 10-9 and hits one high toward Don Beebe at the three. Beebe, one of the fastest bills, but he's down at the 23-yard line. Well, Saturday, Christmas Day, and what a day for sports on NBC. A triple header. First, you'll see the Rockets 21-1. and Elijah Wan against Barkley, and the Suns have lost only four. Great start at 2 o'clock Eastern. Then we switch Candlestick Park. The defense of the Oilers and Warren Moon against Steve Young and the 49ers. And then another NBA feature, primetime Orlando. Shaq goes against Pippen and the Bulls. The Bulls have won 9 of 10. Underneath it goes to Pete Metzelars. And Metzelars with his third catch. He leads the Bills this year with 55. And he was telling us yesterday, his great-grandmother, here's a guy 6'7", the tallest Buffalo Bill, his great-grandmother was 3 feet 2 inches, was in the circus. <laughs> Thurman Thomas, close to a first down. Yeah, to continue the story, his great-grandmother was, was Princess Numa. She married the Carnival Barker, who was 6 feet 3 inches tall. I mean, my waist is 38. That, that pretty much covers <laughs> Prince's move with Numa's height. 38 inches. He said that uh, that great-grandmother uh, passed away giving birth to his grandmother who was watching out in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Yes. And a big football fan in her 80s and following his every catch. Let's see if it's good enough for a first down. Yes, it is. Hey, as long as we're throwing things Metzelar's way, how about congratulations to son Anthony? Two goals for the... Uh, 
the squirt flyers up there in Buffalo. And he says, I want him to be a basketball player, but yeah. loves hockey. He says, uh, sometimes I wonder if I'm living in Canada. <laughs> Close enough, Buffalo. It's a great game. At the 32. Kelly shouting a change of play, and the crowd trying to make it tough. Kenneth Davis. Jarvis Williams again playing up on the line of scrimmage helps out Chuck Klingbeil on the tackle. Now they tried to run the counter that time Dick to the left with Kenneth Davis and frankly I think Buffalo is better running the counter to the right. They have more agile offensive linemen on the left hand side of their set primarily John Pena. Uh, Howard Ballard 75 the right tackle doesn't pull well. Second and nine. Kelly. Incomplete intercepted. J.B. Brown. Brown at the 30. And Brown out of bounds at the 17. This 75,000 rocking Joe Robbie. Brown's fourth interception of the year. You're going to see Thurman Thomas run the circle route. Bounces off his hands. J.B. Brown right there. He's covering Don Beebe. Huge turnover. So far, the ball has clearly bounced Miami's way on the punt and now off Thurman Thomas's hands. So and Scott Mitchell will start at the 16-yard line. That's Jim Kelly's 16th interception of the year. Now, well, Don Shula was ruining the fact that against the Giants, no takeaways. They lost it three times against Pittsburgh Monday night. Pittsburgh took it away three times. None for Miami, but they got two today. And Shula with a 10-9 lead, only 16 yards away from something better. Now you couldn't ask for a much better start here if you're Miami. I mean, Buffalo roars down the field on the opening drive. Your team answers, comes back, gets two turnovers. And now the pressure on the Buffalo defense. It's Keith Jackson, tough catch. It was thrown behind him, and he had to go after it with one hand. We got a Buffalo Bill down on the field. But look, he's looking left and down the field, then suddenly goes to the right. And the fundamentals of that are you've got to keep your feet moving. I mean, Mitchell's played a lot of football, but every once in a while you've got to be reminded of the fundamentals. And we'll check on the injured Bill when we return. Timeout 10-19 left in the half. By Acura, some things are worth the price. By the Citizen Watch Company, because Citizen is how the world tells time. By Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, the best hamburgers and a whole lot more. And by Hertz, for business, for pleasure, nobody does it exactly like Hertz. The injured Bill was safety Henry Jones. He took a block from Mark Ingram. Some of the Bills uh, exception to that block, feeling that it was unnecessary, it appears to be okay. Mitchell on second and ten. Has a man wide open. Touchdown, Keith Jackson. by J.B. Brown converted to a TD in a hurry. So Scott Mitchell three possessions three scores. Stojanovic tax on the extra point. A flag is down. lead by eight 17 to nine 
Well, they got him on this one. Watch what happens here, Dick. They put in a new strong safety. This motion draws him in, and here's the strong safety. No coverage whatsoever on the corner route run by Keith Jackson. Shull stays at the line of scrimmage, and once he gets by, totally untouched. You think these coaches don't know what they're doing? Jones, a Pro Bowl safety leaves. Schultz comes in, first play, right to the tight end. You're going to see it again. The play action, Adam, holds the linebacker and Schultz, 24. The only guy next for Pete Jackson to be covered by is the tuba player in the band. Yes, crowd now on its feet. And Mitchell's return thus far has been all that Miami could have hoped for. Ten points on the turnover. Ten minutes and 14 seconds remaining in this half. And uh, every time you look at the Buffalo score, that'll be a reminder for Bills fans of that missed extra point at undoubtedly will loom throughout this game. They usually uh, haunt you throughout, and it came early. Christie hooked it left. Stoyanovic. And this one will be out of the end zone. Jim Kelly against the Dolphins his 16th game and it's uh, quite obvious when uh, Buffalo wins he's at his best today he has one touchdown one interception uh, at some point these two teams have to get tired of playing each other twice three times in 1990 twice in 91 and three times in 92 the third game in the playoffs where Buffalo won here it's to Brooks, who's out across the 30, and uh, about a first down. Yes, that will be a first down. We go to New York. And we check in on a sudden new receiving star in the NFL. Here's a 10-yard touchdown pass from Benny Testaverde to Heenan McArdle. Fourth catch of his career, but he's got two touchdown catches today, Dick. You can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. Back to Dick Enberg. All right, Jim, and here's the man they're trying to contain Miami. Thurman Thomas out to the 35, a pickup of about five on first down. Daryl Malone from the corner makes the stop. Dick uh, Buffalo tries to find ways to get Thurman Thomas the football. This is a near side counter because Kelly comes over here. The play comes this way. And watch how they do this. You see the guards pull? They just love to get this guy the ball and take their chances. Thomas with 23 yards rushing, nine tries. Kelly being chased from behind, just gets it away to Reed. Reed at the 40, and out of bounds inside the 35. Stephen Braggs, the last of the Miami defenders, pushes him out. Dick, is this a huge play? They've got Kelly dead to rights here. See Coleman, 90, coming on, and Andre Reed, that right elbow's the bad one. Kelly makes a heck of a throw. Reed comes from the slot formation, stays with the play. Kelly told us one time, I tell my players, keep running, stay alert. A huge play for Buffalo. 32 yards. Reed's 579th career. Brooks on the reverse. And he is punished. Jim uh, Kelly, one of those having to get his body in the way to set up the reverse. Braggs made the stop. Uh, this guy, time and time again throughout his career, proving he's more linebacker than he is quarterback. He does not hesitate for a moment to get out here in front of Bill Brooks to try to get a block. Tell him, Come on, follow me, follow me, right on my hip. He got a piece of JV he Brown, he did. Seven yards on the play. Davis hit by Hollier right at the sticks. It'll be close to a first down. Back to the catch by Reed. Uh, not just an ordinary catch at 579. It put him number 16 all time. That's a, he's been a well-kept secret up there in, the, in western New York. At 579, ties Harold Jackson. Harold Jackson. I just like to get those names of the great ones of yesteryear in. Harold, good play. Double uh, O soul from Jackson State. He told us last night that uh, before this season, he'd only missed two games in his entire career. And the two with a dislocated elbow, that shy of a first down, brings up third down. 
Reed, as you're talking, he came out in the class with Altoon, Jerry Rice. I mean, that was an awful good receiving class, and you're right, he's not really gotten the attention he deserves, but after the catch, one of the best the game has. From Cookstown State, he was the 85th player selected in that uh, 85 draft. with a first down to the 19. Marco Coleman made the stop. 65-year-old Marv Levy took him a long time to finally get that secure NFL head coaching job, and he's been terrific in Buffalo. In short yardage, Buffalo Dick has done an excellent job of pushing and shoving this defensive line of Miami. And they're, they're, they're really rooting people out of there. This is a big offensive line, and they work well together. Davis actually has outgained Thurman Thomas by 10 yards today. Here's Thurman. Boy, they got his number. Jarvis Williams, again, anytime there's that hint that Thurman's going to get the ball, uh, Williams right up there in the line of scrimmage. But th that's what they're doing, the run blitz. You're going to see this come right here to try to keep Thomas inside. That's what uh, Pittsburgh was doing last week. Cox from the top 51. Jarvis Williams to free safety from below. Strong safety from below. So Kelly into the shotgun. Over the middle, incomplete, almost intercepted, a flag is down. And that's how the Dolphins got the first interception on the deflection. This time it was off the hands of Andre Reed. Reed again with Vesty Jackson in coverage, runs the crossing route. That just slipped through his hands. It looked like Hollier, 50, was the closest man to uh, try to make the interception. Yeah. He said, oh, what's that coming yeah. at me? That's pigskin. <laughs> You're supposed to grab that. Thomas being helped off the field. Not a good sign. And holding the call against the Dolphins and the automatic first down for Buffalo at the 12. Thomas, of course, injured that forearm last week. He gets a lot of aches and pains, bumps and bruises for the way he throws his body around. Yeah, they're all lumpy this time yes. of the year. Kenneth Davis. Well done. the weak side Davis a dozen yards for the score he's got both Bills touchdowns executed beautifully this is the near counter again you see him go over to the quarterback the quarterback go to him and it works uh, Kenneth Davis told us and said did you run similar to Thurman he said no 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 a actually my offensive linemen get very upset with me they tell me to wait for the blocks on that one he did beautifully Christie adds the extra point. 17-16 Miami. Finally, there's a TV that proves technology can make our lives easy. Again, seven minutes left in the first half, and what a half it's been. Christie to Williams. Mike Williams. Just to the 20, and that's it. Mark Kelso in on the special team. We'll check that. John Perella. Dick, we're going to look at this. First big block is here by Metzelars. Then the guards pull. Kelly goes over to Kenneth Davis. And, you know, we started this game saying Miami was scared to death of Thurman Thomas. Well, the position of running back now for Buffalo doing an excellent job. So if the Miami Dolphins defense kind of takes a deep sigh of relief when Thurman Thomas leaves the field, they got to get stoked up for Kenneth Davis as he scores. Boy, those are the kinds of plays executed. Those assistant coaches oh. had this glory in there yep. on Monday. When you draw them on the blackboard, they don't even look that good, Dick. Now Mitchell's turn. So can you top this? It's deflected and almost intercepted. And look at Bruce Smith. Remember him in the Jets game when he made an interception much like that, a one-hander? Phil Hansen deflected it. And Smith, who's everywhere at 275, almost made another of his Willie Mays catches. Yeah, he has so much athletic ability and strength. You see, Hansen gets his hand up, knocks the ball up the air, and Bruce Smith makes the effort to get over there and try to come up with the interception. Again, Hansen, perfect timing, right in the left bicep. Second and 10 for Mitchell, who is 8 for 14. Two touchdowns in this first half. He scrambles. 
and he can't elude Phil Hansen, the third-year man from North Dakota State, gets him around the ankles. There's a young man who is so quiet, raised on a on a farm out in uh, Oaks, North Dakota. Oaks, North Dakota, 100 miles from Fargo. At one time, he had a clause in his contract. He was such a skinny kid that he had to stay 15 weeks in Buffalo to lift weights so it could get heavy enough to play in the NFL. That's a lot of Buffalo wings. That's, that's huh? a lot of That's a bunch of Buffalo wings. Third down and eight. Ooh, that's a good catch. Middle screen incomplete for Kirby. And for one of the few times uh, in this half, an offense has stopped. Three and out. Uh, a lot of things rely on timing. The snap here makes Mitchell look up for the football. He may have lost track of where Kirby is. And Kirby is trying to get away from, uh, is that Piker? No, it's Jeff Wright, 91. Oh, play didn't work. Dale Hatcher, his first punt officially was 29 yards. This one is a long line drive, returnable for Copeland. He has a touchdown on a punt this year, 35-40. 35, and down at the 48-yard line, Bernie Parmalee got him. 51-yard punt, 20 on the return. Dick Kenberg with Bob Trumpy. It'll be our delight to start the new year, 94, back in South Florida for that national championship game, Florida State and Nebraska. Jim Kelly, 9 for 11. The interception came on a deflection. He starts at the Buffalo 47, trailing by one. 17, 16, 5, 45 left. Knocked back by Mike Golick. Golick breaking through to deflect the ball. Great job by Mike Golick. The idea is when you run a screen, you try to hold the guy at the line of scrimmage ever so slightly, but unfortunately, Golik is coming across 74. You know, you see the hand up in the air, but but 74, Glenn Parker doesn't hold him long enough. You want him released inside, and Golik got around outside. Second and ten, Thomas eludes the tackler. That was that slip screen that worked so effectively in the playoffs last year. As Thomas racked up big yardage time and time again, he gets to the Miami 49, a pickup of almost five. Dick, A.B. This, Brown and Kling by all the tacklers. Excuse me, this is exactly the same play. Exactly the same play that they just tried to run. That time, the guard Parker got going to release inside, and it works. Third and a short six. Kelly. Complete to Metzelar. How did that ball get through there? First down at the 38-yard line, and the big tight end has his fourth catch. Ten on the play. There is a linebacker. You're right, Dick. It goes to the left. Watch the linebacker, Hollier. No, it's Cox. No, it's Hollier. Goes right over his hand. Boy, oh, Kelly, he has found a big target all season long. And, yeah, we may not be able to get it deep, but I can always throw it to the bricklayer. Little delay in the give to Thurman Thomas. He's inside the 35 to the 32-yard line. Hollier makes the stop. Talking about the screens used by Buffalo that uh, Miami befuddled. Here is an example. This was the in January here in Miami. Yeah, this is a play they put in because they thought the uh, Dolphins' defense was so aggressive. This one to Kenneth Davis. Thurman Thomas had a couple of them, too. The screen worked. Although Kelly told us last night that had worked all season. They bring it out again today. On second. They go long for BB. He's open. And he's got it. No. Out of bounds. The late call says he was not inbound. Didn't get both feet down. That would have been at the two-yard line. Darrell Malone who is replacing Troy Vincent, the valued second-year cornerback Vincent, out for the year with a knee injury on Monday night. Malone, 47, got enough of him. And the, the call there for the official is, was B.B. forced out yeah. by the tackler? And, and the other thing is the officials are put in a pretty tough spot here. you got to see the completion, when it happened, and where his feet are. Boy, Buffalo fans could argue, had he not been contacted, he would have been in You're right. Third down and three. And another first down over the middle goes Thomas. Jarvis will check that. Keith McKellar. Keith McKellar, the tight end who has had some brilliant years, but knee surgery wasn't activated till a week or so ago. This is just his second reception. And again, Kelly 
utilizing the tight ends. They're going inside this Miami defense for yardage. Cam Davis, who has both Buffalo touchdowns, is to the 19-yard line with 340 and counting left in the half. What, what Dick, did these two head coaches get together and say, we're going to let you get up and down the field. We're not. We're going to try hard, but not that hard. Let's play a lot of offense today. Navy in Chicago. Tula grew up in the Cleveland area. Reverse to Reed. Oh boy, if that elbow ever was going to be tested, he got rattled on that tackle at the 16-yard line. J.B. Brown and Hollier. Hollier making another hit and Reed okay. Tough kid. So the best Jackson 24 the minute he sees him going he's yelling reverse when he cuts inside and this is with the defense this is what you want to do is cut inside and Hollier is there to make the hammer third and three Kelly to Mitzelars on another first down as the tight end keeps busy he's to the eight yard line Pete Metzelars yeah. up. mother drove the school bus in high school we were uh, talking last night i said pete when did they stop holding up the tight end in the nfl he said i don't know but i sure like it that time he got a little bump at the line of scrimmage but when you turn guys this big loose on defensive bats i mean he's he's seven eight inches taller than stephen braggs and probably 50 60 pounds heavier miami's had trouble stopping opponents goal to go first and goal now they stopped them only once in 14 times this year Slicing through with Brian Cox. That's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Cox dropping Thomas in his tracks. He comes from the backside. Pena 70 misses the block. Cox does not miss the tackle. Working to be the best they can for Buffalo with two minutes to go. Uh, it's the week we're thinking, many of us, uh, Christmas time and a gift. And for the 75,000 uh, Miami fans, so far the first half has been a nice present. Yeah, it's hard to imagine any more that you could pack into one half of football, Dick. I mean, both these teams going up and down the field. The difference being the one missed extra point on the opening drive by uh, Buffalo. We got ten play drives, nine play drives, eight play drives, back and forth up and, up and down the field. Looks like the old AFL days, you know. Lots of scoring, a little bit of defense, always exciting. Two-yard loss on the tackle by Cox So Thomas. So it's second and goal from the 10, a draw to Thomas. They've got him again for a loss. Four yards on this one. Craig Avisi, 94, had infiltrated. Nick, uh, Miami is coming again with a safety blitz to, to help on the run. There's Tom Olivadotti, the defensive coordinator. He's trying to orchestrate as much as he can here. Kelly on the blitz, almost intercepted. It was a quick screen appeared to Thomas. VC was putting on the pressure, and Brian Cox was the man close to going all the way. Again, another blitz run by Tom Olivadotti. Did you see an inside blitz, too? They're just trying to come up with a designer blitz. That is, somebody untouched to get to the quarterback. So to take the lead, Christie for the field goal try. He missed three last week, but he is dead center on this one from 32 yards. And Buffalo leads 19-17. Now with Gail Gilbert holding it, always an adventure. He's good at it, but it's been a lot of years since he had any real practice. He holds in training camp in the summer a lot, but this one laces to the front. Christie with good timing follows through. That's an easy kick. The only time the Bills denied on five possessions was the deflection for the interception. And they've struggled to score. Everybody in Buffalo knows that. They, they have put together beautiful drives. Ready for the kickoff, and uh, Miami with two timeouts left and 1.27 to go. There's the lineup, and see some of the best of college football culminating on New Year's Day here on NBC, beginning 
with the Fiesta Bowl. IBM OS 2 Fiesta Bowl. The Canes against the Cats. And then it'll be the Irish and Aggies from the Mobile Cotton Bowl in Dallas. And back to Miami to the Orange Bowl. The Federal Express, number one against number two, the Huskers and the Seminoles. Understand now the big news is they're not going to allow that flaming spear oh. to be thrown at midfield for Florida State. I like oh. that, though. That's Let's, very... You're going to be tracking that. Yes, I like that. <laughs> I'd like to see that spear thrown. Nothing, you know, we're not trying to start a fight, but it's, it's a great tradition that Florida State has. Well, it, uh, they're saying they're the away team, and so they only have that uh, luxury of the home games. Big news here, as you can imagine, in the Florida State. Long kick by Christie to McDuffie. Won't take a chance. He'll start at the 20. Coming up, the NFL live Domino Pizza report. Lampley, Ditka, and uh, company. Much traveled Mike Ditka back from Chicago and coverage yesterday of the Denver victory against his former team. Yes, it's Dronette. <laughs> Poor Mike. So what's his first name? <laughs> Shane. All right. And Shane had a big day, so it, it, um, it continues. And, and Shane has come home <laughs> Sunday on NBC. <laughs> Mitchell out of the shotgun. Grilling 19-17. With the sideline. And that's going to be a touchdown. Nikki Washington. The cousin of Joe Washington, the all-pro running back, Chargers and the Redskins, has his third career interception. The other two came while he was with New England, and this one for a big six. Mitchell, that blind throw to the sidelines, Irving Fryer, the intended receiver. That's Mitchell's fourth interception in Washington. Generally, you don't have them handed to you any better than that. Mitchell missed the coverage completely. His first touchdown, Mickey Washington. Christie nails the extra point. 26 to 17, Buffalo. A 43 point first half. Here's the pattern. Here's Washington. Mitchell looks right here. This guy is supposed to clear Mitchell out. Uh, Washington out, but Washington is right there to make the interception. I mean, there is, there, there's nothing to it. He reads it perfectly. Sometimes young quarterbacks indicate where they're going to throw, and you have to look them off. But Washington taking over for J.D. Williams at that cornerback. His, didn't you say his first career touchdown? He's only 50 or so behind little Joe now. <laughs> yeah, he's played for Phoenix, the Colts, the Pats, the Redskins, and now the Bills. And Cornelius Bennett with a little push in the back to uh, Scott Mitchell, and Washington makes the score. Well, Marv Levy and his coaches, uh, their decision was to sit J.D. Williams down. He's been struggling at the corner. They give Mickey Washington a chance to start and delivers big with a touchdown, 32 yards. Usually figures out you turn it over, it's going to cost you. Yep. But you don't normally get them that easily. And you know the timing of the touchdown for Buffalo is uh, also important because it has just taken the air out of this crowd from a lead to a one-point Buffalo lead, and now Miami stares at the big deficit. Down by nine. This one's returnable, and it's McDuffie with the honors. Oh, well, he's exciting, and up to the 34-yard line goes the rookie from Penn State. 29-yard return. Reminder again, next Sunday, a doubleheader here on NBC. Raiders, Green Bay, Jets, Buffalo. The Colts will be in New England. And the late game, you'll either see the Steelers, Seattle, or Cleveland at the Rams. That starts at 12.30 with NFL Live next Sunday here on NBC. Well, you wonder if uh, Don Chula now with 1.12 to go, a little uh, edgy about what you do offensively, but he brings Mitchell out in the shotgun. I don't think you'll see any sidelines passes. 
This one's right down the middle. Complete. Irving Fryer at the Buffalo 48. Schultz made the tackle, 19 yards. Dick, Don Shula has great confidence in Scott Mitchell. He has learned from Dan Marino. I think he'll go right back to him just like he did, but you've got to have confidence in this young man because if you're going to the playoffs in the Super Bowl, he's your quarterback. A completed pass to Mark Ingram inside the 35. Another first down. Tally and Washington with a tackle. 15 yards. Nine-point lead. Less than a minute to go. Buffalo's going to be in the in the prevent mode. Not necessarily personnel, but the prevent mode. And Miami taking advantage of it. Uh, this, if you see everybody looking back at the quarterback, playing zone, there's lots of dead spots there. Buffalo doesn't mind. Look, we'll give you three points in this situation. Just we hope the clock is our is our ally here, not our enemy. Dan Marino into that huddle with uh, Hugh Millen, Scott Mitchell. Marino now is out of the cast. Yes, he's out of the cast. I talked to him in the locker room yesterday, and I said, "How's it feeling?" He said, "Well, I may have overdone it last week a little bit. I got a little swelling, so I'm going to lay back here." But he's got two nasty scars on uh, the back of his ankle, and uh, he's in every meeting. Uh, sometimes goes to practice, but he's there to watch film and help these uh, Steve DeBerg and, and Scott Mitchell any way he possibly can. One timeout left for Miami. 39 seconds to go before the intermission. So Mitchell's calling at least three plays, and then there's always an automatic, the fourth play to stop the clock. This would be about a 50-yard field goal, so they're already in Stojanovic's long range. With Phil Hansen in early. Free play for Mitchell. Nothing to lose here. He throws it up for grabs and it's out of the end zone. Off the hands of rookie Thomas Smith. And you'll take the five yards. More importantly, you get five yards and no ticks off the clock. And no one seemed to be moving in that Miami line, so that will be against Buffalo. Offside. Number 90 on a defense, five yard penalty, repeat first down. Bill Hansen, a bit too eager. Number 90, 90. So they spotted at the 27 yard line. Don Chula's team having trouble scoring. The last six games, they scored 10, 19, 17, 16, 14, 20 against Pittsburgh. Trying to pass that in the first half today. Mitchell almost intercepted by Jones as O.J. McDuffie was the intended target. Yeah, O.J. McDuffie became the defender there. He made sure that Jones wasn't going to make the reception. It's down the middle again, total zone by Buffalo, and McDuffie does a great job. He doesn't want the interception there. Knocks the ball away. For Miami fans, uh, they point out that uh, when the Dolphins score 21 or more, they win. They're 5-0 and this year. Sitting on 17 at the moment. Down by 9. 26 seconds left in the half. Good protection. Uh-oh. The almost gets a Miami receiver, O.J. McDuffie. And Kurt Schultz was there to defend. That went off Kirby's hands. Barry Kirby, 43, is going to run the circle route. Mitchell's looking away, goes right off of his hands. And an excellent job by Schultz to knock the ball away from O.J. McDuffie. So it's third and five. Mitchell, who started hot, now having some problems. Just 10 for 20. Two touchdowns and one interception for a touchdown. The interception. yards and with eight seconds there is time for one play dick they ran the same play on the play before the ball was it was tipped kirby just runs the little circle route hooks up and there's no coverage there jones was the closest man then schultz and he remains inbound so now do you kick it or you try one more time oh, in the you end gotta zone? try the one play sure. with eight seconds you're gonna throw it anyway yeah 
but it kind of narrows things down. You know it's going to be a throw. You can't run it. There's Hugh Millen taking over the hand signaling job from Doug Peterson on the sideline. Gary Stevens to the right there along with Don Shula. This is a nice offensive brain trust that's been in place for a lot of years. Tony Nathan and Shula have surrounded himself on the signs of greatness in a coach. He's not only acquiring players but acquiring quality coaches. And he hasn't, uh, he doesn't change coaches very often. Now this is a four-point play. Shula's either going to get seven or three, you would figure, out of this. They've had their difficulties in first and goal. A yard and a half. And one play to get a touchdown. And Marv Levy's going to make sure that uh, waits for Miami to break huddle and then calls time himself. Yeah, don't they do that on the out-of-bounds playing basketball? See what's going to be deployed out there, and then we can kind of change our defense a little bit. Let's go back to Kirby's uh, catch with the yards on that reception. He goes over the 1,000-yard mark uh, total scrimmage yards. He's been very productive this third-round pick, who's uh, such a bright, interesting guy. We were to think, compare your situation with Charlie Ward, the terrific uh, player of Florida State, the Heisman Award winner, football, basketball. You were football, basketball. How'd you make the decision? He said, well, I had a necklace with a basketball on it and a football on it. When I was a senior, the basketball fell off. I couldn't find it. So I don't know how Charlie Ward is going to make his decision, but there's the advice from Terry Kirby. That's an omen, if nothing else. I mean, <laughs> the basketball falls off. But Kirby, we've said it earlier in the season, but it's worth repeating. This guy has, has activity-induced asthma and has overcome it. Now the decision made. Kirby's in there with Mitchell in the shotgun. Well, I watch for the quarterback draw here, Dick. Mitchell fires. Oh, almost intercepted by Matt Darby. And the receiver was open. Keith Jackson. Darby diving. Made the big play, just as he did down on the goal line to deny Dallas early in the season. This is going to be coming right at us. Behind, there's Jackson streaking across there. Darby makes a heck of a play. Jackson was open, running down the back end of the end zone, back line of the end zone. Last line of defense, Darby the safety man. And so it's Stojanovic with what amounts to an extra point for the three. Kicking from the nine-yard line. Well, Miami pulls within side a touchdown, 26-20 at the intermission. The difference being Mickey Washington's 32-yard touchdown on the interception to give Buffalo the advantage. High scoring, plenty of action. How close is it to a touchdown? Here's Jackson, and here's the man who knocks the ball away. Excellent job by Darby, watching the eyes of the quarterback. In the last moment, he goes back, knocks the ball away, saves the six points. Now for the scores and highlights, NFL Live in New York. We'll have possession yes. last. You're absolutely right. Uh, both of these teams have played very well offensively. A little bit suspect defensively. Each team is being able to uh, just pretty much go through their offensive game plan. And, and Nick, it's, it's hard to find something that has not worked for either or both offenses. Mickey Washington, the Buffalo cornerback, his interception touchdown. The difference, but a missed extra point on the first Buffalo score. Still a very important miss. 26-20, and let's take a look now at the Coors Light first half statistics. And uh, expected a lot of yards, 240 for Buffalo. Dick, there are two things that jump out to me. That's the running yards for the two teams. Miami had minus two rushing yards in the second quarter, and the 83 rushing yards, they've stopped Thomas. But the combination of Thomas and Kenneth Davis have combined for 83 rushing yards. Time of possession for Buffalo, very unusual. These are unusual numbers. They're scoring points on the road. This is an unusual performance for Buffalo here. Dolphins start from the 20. Mitchell with a couple of touchdown passes and just missed a third at the gun to end the first half when Matt Dobby did not. Good play action fake and a throw to Keith Jackson. He fumbles and it's going to be picked up by Nate Odom. Odom with only Mitchell to beat. Touchdown, Buffalo. Oh, my. Daryl Talley knocked it free. And Odom, who 
leads the AFC and tied for the NFL with eight interceptions, scoops up the fumble, and scores his first touchdown of the year. It's the bootleg by Miami, and it's wide open. And you're right, Dick. Daryl Talley makes the play. Well, two defensive scores in one football game. Not a bad day, either home or on the road. Christie's trying for point. Gail Gilbert to hold. And since the first miss, everything right on target for Buffalo. 33-20. You're going to see Mitchell roll to the left. And Daryl Talley recognizes what's going on. Jackson has it. Second foot. And then Daryl with that big right arm strips it away. Nate Owen was right there to pick it up. And unfortunately, Mitchell again trying to make a tackle to save a touchdown. And Daryl Talley, when uh, he and Bruce Smith came in the room last night, he said during the week, Talley does the talking. Bruce Smith says, yeah, game day, I do the talking. Tally talked loud and clear there. That is a Major League Pro Bowl play. Well, he said yesterday it's crunch time, and that's where we veterans who know about getting to the Super Bowl are going to step up our game, and Thurman Thomas, one of the members of that Buffalo Corps. You know, there are a lot of folks around the country that, uh, because the Bills have lost three Super Bowls, say, well, they can't do it, but you can't tell these men that no. they can't do it because uh, they still are one of the dominant teams in the American Football Conference, and men like Callie and Smith and Thomas and Kelly, uh, the core has stayed, and yep. they still play well. You're right. And this is a game, when you look at it from a long distance, of what have you done for me lately? Uh, the Buffalo Bills won seven of their first eight. They're only lost to Miami. And uh, they went two and three over their next five, and these guys have another gear. And today, they're in that next gear for the playoffs. Odom's 25 yards on his fumble recovery touchdown. It comes down to Mike Williams. Williams knocked down at the 22-yard line. Two teams that start today. A flag is down on the kick return. Start at 9-4 and four. for Miami. A win plus a Tampa upset against the Raiders would give them a playoff spot for Buffalo. As you look at that Houston uh, score, surprising score at Pittsburgh, remember that Buffalo beat Houston earlier this year. So if they should go on through and be tied with the same record end of the year, Buffalo would get the home field edge there. And don't forget, too, uh, it's Houston and the 49ers next Saturday here on NBC. There's a look at the remaining games. Miami goes to San Diego and to New England, two away games. Buffalo has the Jets at home and at the Colts. Jets at Buffalo and at Houston. Jets uh, will need a lot of help now to get in the playoffs there at the face mask against Buffalo. So now, Joe Robbie Stadium, stunned in silence. One play, one touchdown for Buffalo here in this second half. down by Phil Hansen and Jeff Wright, the two big men in the middle of that Buffalo defense. Uh, Dick, I, I think you put it so well, and it's worth reiterating. This Buffalo football team, such a resilient bunch. And I think that the people that run the Buffalo Bills are smart enough to keep the core together, as you said. I mean, they're, they're, they're inseparable. They're like brothers, not teammates on this Buffalo Bill team. Mitchell with a duck, and it's intercepted by Matt Darby. Darby at the 40. Darby at the 30. He's still on the loose. Oh, and brought down. He had a touchdown except for that final lineman. It was Keith Sims, the guard, who saved another score at the 19-yard line. Disaster striking Miami in the second half. It was intended for Pryor, not thrown well at all. End to end. And Buffalo's defense... That free safety spot, just sitting back there waiting to make the interception. And when it bounces off hands or the quarterback throws it up, boy, they're taking advantage of it now. Does 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 Don Shula keep Mitchell in, or do you give DeBerg a shot here? Yeah, we'll keep an eye on the sideline, see if uh, DeBerg starts warming up. That just, you can see right out of the hands of Mitchell, a bad pass. Yeah. 
It took forever to get there, and now Don Shula talking with Gary Stevens, and uh, the decision is to at least warm up to Bird. Meanwhile, Kelly to Thomas. He's on his way inside the five to the one-yard line. 18 yards for Thomas, who wanted desperately to get it all. Stephen Braggs, one of those to deny. First and goal, Buffalo. They run the counter again, Dick. It's worked all day. You see Parker and Davis, 74 and 65. Excellent block by Davis on 50 Hollier and Thurman Thomas. He doesn't get many opportunities to run for this kind of yardage down at Joe Robbie Stadium, enjoying every minute. And again, John Offerdahl not here. Tell me that, that that's not a factor. Davis is not in. They keep Thomas in. Uh, trying to give him the touchdown. He's up over the top, and he is denied. Yeah, they usually bring in Kenneth Davis. Kind of a reward for Thurman Thomas. Yeah. Marwell Gardner, the lead blocker. Uh, Thurman does a lot of things. Can't jump as well as Kenneth Davis, apparently. And now Thurman goes out. Davis goes in. And there's Oscar of the Oscar and Felix duo. He and Daryl Talley. Yeah, that defense has earned the smiles the way they played today. Two touchdowns and trying to convert this one into a third. Play action by Kelly. No one open. Throws it away. Metzelar is at the back end of the end zone. The only man with a chance at it. Third and goal. Flag down. So long for Kelly. You almost wonder if uh, Lyman might have uh, slipped into the end zone for Buffalo. I think that was intended for. They were going to try to hit John Fina, a tackle who was eligible. There's John Fina in there lobbying. You have to report if you have an ineligible number in an eligible spot. Let's see what Howard Rowe says. flag on the play. Number 70 did report eligible coming in. Incomplete pass brings up third down. Sino caught a touchdown pass last year against the Colts. Here he sits right here and as long as he reports to the official then he's okay but see, he's going downfield as a receiver. He's legal if he reports and he did. Davis the tailback. And Davis has his third touchdown today. What a statement by the Buffalo Bills. 40 to 20 if the extra point is good. And Davis, who had only three touchdowns rushing all year, matches that today. Again, look at the shove by that Buffalo offensive line. And Dick, the most points to this point, the Buffalo Bills had scored in any game this season was 39 in the opener against New England. Now with 12-12 uh, to go in the third in the third quarter, they're about to hit 40. There it is. 14 points in two minutes, 48 seconds of the second half. Buffalo. When you choose a family car. You put all your eggs in one basket. So, when it came to safety engineering, from standard dual airbags to side impact protection, Mitsubishi did the same thing. Introducing the all-new 1994 Mitsubishi Galant with some of the most comprehensive safety engineering of any car in its class. Lease a new Galant S now for just $500 down and $199 a month. Geronimo thunders across the big screen like a herd of wild horses. Jason Patrick, Robert Duvall, Gene Hackman, and Wes Studi as Geronimo. Rated PG-13. At theaters now. When regular drills hold you back, send in the Ranger cordless drill from Black & Decker. It goes anywhere to handle all the tough jobs. No strings attached. The Ranger cordless drill. A powerful gift idea from Black & Decker. Could we claim the new Norelco razor shaves closer than ever without hundreds of tests to back it up? Say our new precision groove helps the Norelco lift and cut system shave closer without proof? No. We wouldn't say it's our closest shave ever without science, sensors, tests. But of all the tests that prove it's closer, the most convincing requires a personal touch. The new Norelco razors, our closest shave ever. 
The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Starter, authentic apparel and headwear of the NFL. By Mitsubishi, test drive the all-new 1994 Mitsubishi Galant. By the new Norelco Razors, our closest shave ever. And by Black & Decker, the source of powerful gift ideas. Crack production staff going to no ends. A little fake snow there in the football. Believable. A reminder that hovering over Joe Robbie, a airship shampoo painted black and white like America's killer whale at SeaWorld. Nice to have them with us today and on the kick. The kneel down by McDuffie and at the 20-yard line, Miami trailing by 20 tonight on NBC. It all starts troubled kids whose lives are changed when cops reach out, open their hearts, and their homes to them. Good cop, bad kid, followed by an all-new sequest starring Roy Scheider. And then the adventure continues. Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd in the box office hit Back to the Future Part 3. That's tonight on NBC. Steve DeBerg has replaced Scott Mitchell at quarterback. Mitchell, a horrendous second half after uh, he had his troubles at the end of... The first half, in a period of about four minutes, gave up three touchdowns. Goodness. Two interceptions, the fumble for me, not his uh, fault. He fires a rear call on the ground and earns a couple. Uh, I think when you have young quarterbacks in situations like this, uh, we asked him yesterday, the last time he was play, he played in a pressure game. And he said, well, the one can against Kansas City here, and I said, you're correct. Before that. He had to go back to the World Bowl, played in Montreal when he played for Orlando against Sacramento. So this kid is experienced, this kid is talented, but he's not faced a lot of pressure situations in his young NFL career. It showed today. Derby and Byers then behind the oldest player in the league. DeBerg will be 40 next month. Side steps the rush down the middle to Kirby. To the 44-yard line. That was a terrific play by DeBerg yes. to escape the pressure and gain 22. Moved around nicely in the pocket. Gave himself a lane. He's going to scramble to the left. Again, 56. Darrell Talley on the blitz. Picked up nicely by Keith Byers. And this Kirby kid has great hands if he can just learn how to hang on to it and hang on to it tough. Four catches for Kirby today in 58 yards. DeBerg goes down. Goganius. No fumble. Keith Goganius, a middle blitz. You don't see that too often. Often they'll bring Tally or a corner, but uh, Goganius, the middle backer, shoots through. You don't think they learned something from Pittsburgh? DeBerg was just absolutely harassed. Yeah, here's Goganius right here. And again, nobody touches him. This is the developing into a problem for the Miami Dolphins. Part of it is Steve DeBerg and the quarterbacks at Miami call pass protection. And he's not learned the entire offense. And in these last two weeks, defense has taken advantage of that. DeBerg been sacked 14 times now in four games with the Dolphins. Look at Smith with a goal rush. It's a screen to Buffalo. But all of Buffalo, and he fumbles. And Buffalo seems to have it again. Yes, they do. Looks like Mike Lodi, 73 on the ball. Oh, my. So an interception, touchdown into the first half, a fumble for a touchdown to start the second half, and then an interception leads to another score and still another turnover forced by Buffalo. Bennett on the outside, Maddox on the inside. He just dropped it. And Lodish makes the recovery. Buffalo ball again in capital letters. At the 37 of Miami. Uh, he said with a big smile, released from the hospital yesterday, that his teammates uh, awarded a game ball. Even though Kelly didn't uh, rally them, but yeah. it was right last week at Philadelphia, and she was very touched by that. Mother Alice, back in East Brady. Kelly throws wide open as BB at the 27. That'll be right at the sticks. J.B. Brown was the only Dolphin. Well, now the Dolphins have no choice whatsoever but to blitz on almost every play, try for the turnovers as best they possibly can. There's Tom Alabadotti. Well, it looks like he wants somebody to be punched there. I don't know what that's <laughs> that We're taking one on the chin is what he's saying. It is a first down. Thomas. Ooh, solid tackle again by Brian Cox. At, at this point in the game, unless Miami can come up with a turnover, uh, Buffalo is golden here. They have played so spectacularly. 
There's a Lodish on the sideline with the fumble recovery. His mom, too. <laughs> Lotus is in the cool zone. <laughs> when you recover fumble, that is cool. That's normally reserved for starters, you know, not the backup. Still nine minutes left in the third quarter, but Buffalo with a stunning start here in the second half, and Kelly goes for more. It's BB. What an explosion, Dick. Last four possessions, four touchdowns for Buffalo. Slant run by BB. Excellent pass protection up front. BB with the good hands inside Malone, 47. Williams on the inside. Exclamation point, Buffalo. Now Byers fumble, recovered at the 37, leads to the Kelly BB touchdown. BB is third score this year. I guess that extra point miss isn't going to be so important no. after all. <laughs> uh, 47 not, to 20. Not long ago, this was a very close game. Watch this move by BB. Excellent job on the release to the outside of Daryl Malone, making his first NFL start. Kelly puts it right in the belly button. And Jarvis Williams on the inside. And then Daryl Talley. Yeah. Daryl Talley leading the spirited Bills up by 27. When they told him he didn't have the size to play, he reached inside and found the power. Starter. He was from a small school and made only seven plays, three turnovers, 21 points for Buffalo. 47 to 20 to score. O.J. McDuffie. Down to the 23-yard line. Jim Kelly. Helped out by the defense. The last four possessions all uh, featuring uh, turnovers. Well, the defense can ride in the first-class seats flying home to Buffalo after this game. And Jim Kelly with his yardage today has passed uh, a couple of pretty good quarterbacks on the all-time list. He's up to number 29. He goes by Jim Plunkett and Bobby Lane. Bobby Lane. Oh, Jim Pump, uh, uh, I'll tell you, Jim Kelly and Bobby Lane would spend some time together if they were the same age. They would have enjoyed it. Yes. Lane never lost a game, said it just sometimes the clock uh, ran out on him. Yep. The bird. What do you do in this situation? Go short to Fryer, and uh, Fryer rolls for about five. Yeah, Dick, Buffalo is going to be in the prevent mode here for the rest of this game. They'll give him the underneath stuff. Making up 27 points. Miami is going to go with a hurry up with 8.33 to go in the third quarter to try to catch up. Bird from the shotgun. Short to Kirby. Kirby struggling to a first down at the 36-yard line. And DeBerg with his yardage. Uh, he start his, starts today in the number eight spot all-time in yardage passing. Look how deep these safeties are. When the ball is snapped, those safeties' first step is backwards. They're going to make, see there? They're going to make sure that nobody gets deeper than those safeties. They'll make the tackles underneath for the rest of this game. Hope for the best. And another little short pass underneath. And Kirby making something out of it. Look at him, guys. Well, it's nice he got it to his own teammate there. He had a tendency to give it to the other guys. This time he gave it to the one with the fish on the helmet. Again, the underneath stuff to Kirby. And then Daryl Talley, excuse me, uh, Goganius misses the tackle. And the nice lateral to Mark Ingram, that's that's the way it's not the way it's designed, but it is a 34 nice yard play. Yeah, 34. So at the 30 yard line with a 7.39 left in the third quarter. The Berg uh, looking at some heroics now. Underneath the Kirby, he's got some more running room. 10, 5, touchdown. Oh, wait, but yes, now they signal touchdown. 34, and then another 34. Can you top this? They get linebacker coverage again on Kirby. You're going to see Goganius 50 to his back and right. 
Linebackers can't cover running backs in the game today anymore. He does hang on and he does score. That's back-to-back 34-yard -back plays, Dick. Is that what you said? That's right. And Kirby uh, now with a third touchdown receiving. He's been very productive. Had some fumbles, but he's a future star for Miami. Can do it all. 47-27. Get out the abacus. The engineers of Mitsubishi have... I've score here at Joe Robbie. 47-27. Kirby with that touchdown. And less than a quarter's time, if you go back to the second period, less than a quarter's time has expired. We've seen... Uh, Five touchdowns and a field goal. 38 <laughs> points. <laughs> <laughs> and the halftime performance. So now Buffalo says maybe they're going to onside kick, so they bring in the good hands team. And Stoyanovic noting that then drills it long. Copeland. 10, 15. And that's all he gets to the 15-yard line. Good coverage. Bobby Harden just activated it on the tackle and a little extra afterwards as the team's uh, almost the bench is almost empty and flags go down. And here comes Brian Cox in there, 51. But Dick, he was late getting on the field, did not start it. Whoop. Klingbeil, a former hockey defenseman up there in northern Michigan, throwing a pretty good right cross. Uh, he, got, he got somebody's helmet off. I believe that's an ejection. When you take somebody's helmet off their head. Thurman Thomas says, what's the fuss all about? <laughs> I'm tired. How can you guys have this much energy, he says. See if we can pick up what happened at the outset. Just a lot of pushing and shoving. Oh, started there, there with uh, Saxon. James Saxon and Carwell Gardner. Gardner, 35, was one of those who took exception. Remember back in the uh, early going when Mark Ingram threw a block on Henry Jones. Yeah. That's John Davis. Got. Now that is a hockey move. You get the sweater over the head. Yeah. In this case, it just get the helmet off the head. That was an uppercut by uh, Klingbeil. But there. Personal foul. We've got offsetting fouls. 45 and 99. Personal foul. 45 and 49. Miami disqualified. Who's out? Who's out? Who's out? Who's out? I think he's 99 yeah. and 45, which would be both Bobby Harden and Chuck Klingbeil are out. So already thin on defense. Don Shula loses two defenders on one play. One Harden, a backup. Defensive back and Klingbeil, a very important uh, nose man. Harden on the sideline. Dick, I think it's because not only the punch thrown, but the helmet taken off of John Davis's head by Chuck Klingbeil. And now Brian Cox on the sideline being settled down by his teammates. An explanation to Don Shula. Brian Cox was over there saying, wait a minute, this isn't fair. This isn't right. Well, this is the case in all the melees in sport. The officials don't, don't see everything, and it's usually the uh, second man in. Yep. Uh, the the counterattack gets caught. But nevertheless, uh, you know the rules, and uh, when uh, you're out of control, out you go. Plus, there'll be penalty yards now for Buffalo instead of starting at the 15. Or will they be nullified? Maybe they... Uh, once again, we have got offsetting personal fouls. Number 45 and 49, Miami, have been disqualified. Who do they have? Well, he said, Howard Rose said 49 again. There is no 49 on the Miami roster, but Chuck Klingbeil is on the sideline. So it's 99. So no penalties marked off, nullifying penalties, but... Miami comes out with a minus two on the player count. Harden, uh, they can perhaps afford to lose him. He was just activated, but they'll really miss playing by him. And early motion by Buffalo, false start, it would appear. Well, 
as, as good as this game has been played, I hate to see it deteriorate into something like that. There's Klingbeil on the sideline. to go in the third quarter fans if you're just joining us and this already is the highest scoring game of the entire NFL season 47 27 Buffalo the Bills taking advantage of several Miami miscues to score quickly at the end of the first half and then three quick scores here in the third quarter building up a 47 20 lead then Miami with a quick score and now the fans are back in it. Thurman Thomas. And the Dolphins digging at the football, and Thurman clutches tightly. Marco Coleman, the tackler. Let's go to New York. And take a look at what may be the beginnings of a Pittsburgh comeback. From 36 yards out, O'Donnell hits Eric Green, who goes down the sideline into the end zone. Now watch Chris Dismond hits Green in the end zone afterward, and Green says, hey, what are you, crazy? 188 pound cornerback taking me on. It narrows the margin to 23-10 in the third. Thanks, Jim. Back here in Miami, that's not good news. Howard Ballard, the giant house, 330 pound right tackle for the Bills. One of the best tackles in the league. Limps off Jerry Kraft, who outweighs him by about 25, comes in, number 66. Thurman Thomas for a couple of more to the 15 to bring up third and 10. Buffalo thinking just hang on to the football. Miami thinking get it any way we can, including in the upcoming punt when it gets to fourth down, trying to block the punt. They need the ball in their offense, and they need it in great field position. Going back in the huddle, too. The same big hurry that that cake on offense usually represents. Oh, what a catch by BB, and I believe he's got a first down. What a play! A one handed grab by BB. He runs a crossing route underneath, and he does a nice pirouette to make this catch. This is very late thrown by Kelly. It's a one hander. Bestie Jackson can't make the tackle. Malone makes the hit, but not before it's close enough for a measurement. And that would be a huge third down conversion. Whoa, just enough. And BB with a circus catch. He has a touchdown earlier. And that was so important because at least the Miami fans were helping the Dolphins defense build some momentum. Uh, early punt here, and who knows yep. the way they're scoring so freely, but now another three downs for Kelly to work with. You know, when we talked to Daryl Taylor last night, remember what he told us? He said, how do you consistently beat Miami over the last several years? He said, we have made the big plays. Have they made the big plays today? Offensively and defensively, they made the big plays. Well, you can tell when Kelly and Buffalo has a sizable lead, you see him in this situation, a huddle. Very unusual. And they'll let that 40 seconds, 45 seconds, tick away between each play. There's Tally, one of the emotional leaders of this team. He's on his way, I would think, to another Pro Bowl the way he's played. Leading tackler, fourth score fumbles. Herman Thomas. No game. Brian Cox and Marco Coleman with the tackle. Minnesota making it tough on Green Bay today. Chris Carter with a couple of touchdowns. Pittsburgh still by... 13 in the third. Howard Ballard uh, walking apparently toward, uh, no, I guess just trying to walk it off. Thought he was heading toward the locker room. That's a 16 quadruple E shoe he's walking on there. Any injury to his foot is a major injury. Thomas, the tailback, he has 45 yards rushing today. Play action for Kelly. And he finds the tight end, Keith McKellar. 
predict the tight ends today have had a field day. 13 yards and a first down for Buffalo. Should be coming right at you. McKellar's with a free release outside of Jeff Cross, 91. The man in coverage is Jarvis Williams, 26. It's just a simple out pattern run, and if you can allow those tight ends free release off the line of scrimmage, McKellar, when he was healthy last couple of years, big part of this offense. Yeah, and he has the speed to go deep. Yes. Kelly has missed that. Thurman Thomas to the 41, a gain of three. 345 left in the third quarter. Buffalo by 20. Chris Moore, the punter for the Buffalo Bills, has not kicked all day. He's had no business today. Chris Moore, the punter. And it appeared to be a false start. We'll see. Crowd making some noise, and uh, that a factor, and Kelly's mates hearing the signal. Prior to the snap, we got a false start on number 84 offense. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. There's no question. But he's been hurt so long, you know, he's anxious to get into every play. Golick was uh, leaning into the neutral zone, but uh, they judged McKellar's action first. Word on Howard uh, Ballard is a knee injury questionable return. Thomas waiting patiently for his doctors and Brian Cox with another tackle along with Dwight Hollier. Catch it from behind if you can slow it up in front. That is, there are defenders out there, then people come in pursuit from behind to. Bring the ball carrier down, and that's the best way to stop the counter. Well, Shula has been coaching on the highest level for 31 years. He's seen most everything, but this season, 93 will be one to remember for a lot of reasons. His own success passing Hellas, but how about the win at Dallas? How about what he's watching today? This is something unlike uh, a Don Shula game. It looks as if you're going to have to score over 50 to win it. Kelly using the time now. And Dick, to add to that, this has looked today like a, a, a Don Shula coach team like I've never seen. They've made mistakes here that over the last couple of three weeks, the blitzes that have hurt them, the pressure they've uh, allowed on the quarterback, uh, the loss of uh, some emotion or some control out there, and Chuck Klingbile. It all started when Buffalo led 19-17 late in the first half and Mickey Washington picked off a Scott Mitchell pass and ran 32 yards with a touchdown and then the mistakes seemed to compound themselves on third down Kelly to throw and he throws it away the closest man Cornelius Bennett who was on the sideline I don't see any flags on the field but the officiating crew is gathering together for some call or something I don't know what to Howard Rowe? I guess it's nothing. There is no play on the play. We're going to replay. We're going to replay third down. Well, you can understand it. With so many plays going for big yardage today, with something like that, they're just going to throw that one back in the pond and play it over again. I mean, that was embarrassing not to get yards, the way they've been uh, running up and down the field this afternoon. No play on the play. We're going to replay. All right. The play. Third and 11. Seven DBs for Miami. Lots of time to the sidelines to BB, and he can't pull in this one. JB Brown on the coverage. That stops the clock, 204. And Miami will get it back. First time we've seen Chris Moore, the kicker from Alabama, is averaging a bit over 40 a punt this year. Kicks and, them high. And Dick, you got to think that they're going to go after this punt. I mean, Miami's got a 
Well, they got a weapon here in McDuffie. Don't forget yeah. a couple of touchdowns off punts. Tough choice. Sending in someone late. Gets it off, and it's a end over end to McDuffie. A fair catch at the 25, and Steve Tasker right there, as always. 38-yard punt. Miami with the ball, just under two to go in the third quarter. 47-27 Buffalo. Watch here. Tony Martin, 89, comes in late. That's another sign of very unusual for a Don Shula coach team. Normally, everybody's there. And they're, they're going after it with nine guys as best they possibly can. Buffalo blocks it well. And it turns out to be a nice offensive play for Buffalo. Steve DeBerg in the relief of Scott Mitchell. He got them a touchdown the last possession. To Terry Kirby. Nine on the play, tackled by Marcus Patton and Cornelius Bennett. Dick, uh, Buffalo went back to their base defense. Three, four, four defensive backs. Forget that uh, prevent defense that Walt Corey put out there before. Let's go with our standard package here. Miami without a huddle, second and short. DeBerg is seven for seven. Eight for eight. Keith Jackson juggling, no, incomplete as a call, did not pull it in. And that would have been another uh, fumble recovery, and. He was hit hard and doesn't get up. Henry Jones, a strong safety, number 20 got him. He's just going to run a, a little circle pattern, turn around. Jones hits him what appears to be right in the ribs. When he fell and trying to catch the ball, looked like he landed on his elbow, may have affected his shoulder somehow. That's not a big hit. But when he tries to reach for the ball, yeah, he's on the elbow. It may have affected the shoulder, Dick. That's what Miami needs is any other kind of injury. Well, both coaches have said it's uh, one of the worst they've ever been around uh, in terms of injuries. Yeah. Nowadays, you don't just get pulled muscles, although they do happen. I mean, things get broken out here in the NFL anymore. These guys are so big and strong and in such great condition. Now Jackson's up and moving. It'll be third and one for Miami is... Uh, Jackson gets a hand coming on. Has his sixth touchdown of the season today to lead Miami. John offered all re-entering the hamstring, one of his uh, many problems. Not been healthy all season long and uh, tried to go yesterday, and you could just almost read in his eyes. He tried to fake us and say, well, I might go, I'm going to warm up, but you just could tell he was disappointed. Had a heavy rep on that hamstring. Berg in four minutes, seven for eight and 110 yards, but he needs one to keep this one going. Ingram in motion. Throw to Ingram. He's got it at the 40. Out of bounds. First down at the 44. 122 left in the third. Ten yards on the play. Mickey Washington on the tackle. Again, that was the 4-2-6 look by Buffalo. Six defensive backs. Now they wind the clock, so they stop the clock. It doesn't stay stopped on the out-of-bounds here until the last five minutes of the game or half. But uh, you're given a little time if you don't want to huddle. But one of the disadvantages for DeBerg is that uh, he's only been a month in this offense. He throws incomplete. Just as well if McDuffie had caught it, he was well covered. Uh, Bruce Smith and uh, Hanson were both right at Steve DeBerg. Pressure again. Uh, Smith. Here's Smith right here. Here's Hanson right here. They kind of make a, a meeting point, a meeting place at the quarterback. The defensive line is still getting good pressure. Well, it kind of fell into each other. DeBerg stepped away from it. 103 left in the third. Lotus comes in now for Jeff Wright. The protection for DeBerg. Good coverage by Buffalo's Mickey Washington, denying uh, Irving Fryer. I think the fans are complaining their legs got tangled. And uh, Washington looking back uh, for the ball along with 
Irving Fryer. You see the bump up front by Thomas Smith. Well, there was a hand around the back there. I don't know. But uh, that's been allowed all season Yes, long. it has. I mean, it's the uh, freedom given the defensive backs, and it's been consistent, because uh, in part why uh, defenses have controlled. It hadn't been the case today, but been more liberal interpretation of uh, defensive penalties. The inside goes to Tony Martin. Tony Martin. A little the flanker screen, yeah. and he's down to the 39-yard line. 17 on the play. It's the slip screen where you get offensive linemen out in front as quick as you possibly can. See Sims come out there. Also, Terry Kirby with a block. Tony Martin turns it back inside. If you can get him back out on the sideline, it works just a little bit better. Final seconds of the third quarter. Miami trying to pull it in 13 before the final. Oh, Irving Fryer tried to run before he pulled it in. Miami's almost to the point now where they've got to stay in the uh, shotgun and throw it on every down. This is certainly going to be caught in most instances, but I think Fryer's trying to make a big play out of it. And that's generally the net result. But we've got an official hurt uh, taking his time over there on the or a contact tire lens line. or something lost. Yeah. It's just a wonder with all the bodies flying that more. Yeah. Somebody uh, dug tool. It is the side judge injuring a leg. And trainers from both teams routinely treat the, the officials treat it just like players. They'll retape an ankle or. Scott Mitchell, who started and played very well early in the first half, giving way to Steve DeBerg. And DeBerg now welcomes Keith Jackson back into the huddle for Miami. Marv Levy. Going for four straight Super Bowls. It wasn't, uh, that's not the way it started in high school. And then co college is alma mater, University of New Mexico as an assistant and head coach a couple of years. Three years at Cal as the head, and William and Mary a short term. Eagles and Rams, Redskins under George Allen, special teams coach. Finally, a head coach in the pros with the Alouettes and the Chiefs. <laughs> and then the big one, NBC Sports <laughs> with Len Berman and uh, Pete Axelm. Chicago Blitz head coach. Back to the Alouettes as the director of operations. And not until uh, he was well over 50 years of age. In fact, he was uh, 53 when Buffalo hired him and 12 great seasons for Marv. Took a losing program, turned it around. Prepared to make a four trip to the Super Bowl. This is second and ten. The bird goes long. Broken up at the last minute by the rookie Thomas Smith from North Carolina. He had been beaten, but was able to close and deflect it away. Uh, the Dolphins not about to give up on this game. They can sneak Irving Pryor, who still has outstanding speed down the sideline. Well thrown by Steve DeBerg. That is a beautiful play by Smith. Perfect timing. So often you see those cornerbacks go up and they just... They can jump high enough, but the timing is not there and the completion is made. Went to Carolina on a one-year academic scholarship, a walk-on there with the heels, and becomes a first-round draft pick in the league. Two seconds left in the quarter, third and ten. The bird fires and hits McDuffie. First down at the 20. So when the fourth period starts, Buffalo leads by 20. Miami threatening to score. Now, John Wayne Bobbitt's first television interview. When they say it's possible you may be crippled sexually for the rest of your life, how does that make you feel? Now, NBC Wednesday. We figure there are two basic ways to sell you a new Plymouth Sundance. The first is to tell you... This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the NFL is prohibited. Welcome back to Miami. Yeah, go ahead, Bob Trumpy. Circle that. That's unbelievable. 21. Well, the 21 in the third quarter. That's a big circle. You're going to take them a just like you. There. Oh, you want those right here. Yeah. 38 in two quarters for Buffalo. And 
four of those touchdowns off turnovers. Miami starts at the 21, opening the fourth quarter. A touchdown here would pull him within 13. Mark Ingram with a catch. First and goal at the nine. Thirteen yards on the play. And you're going to see the blitz, too. DeBerg does a great job to stay with this play because Henry Jones is strong safety and Daryl Talley blitzes. Another untouched blitzer on a Miami quarterback. This is becoming too repetitive for Miami. For DeBerg, in his four games here, now set. He's done a great job getting the team inside the 20, but scoring has been another problem. And down he goes. Too much time taken. Good coverage downfield. Bruce Smith has a 12 and a half sacks now on the year. He leads Buffalo again. They had a great, great coverage down the field. When you can get the quarterback to go to his outlet receiver, he's looking right. He has to come back in the middle. Nobody in the left. Draws it back, and that will give Bruce Smith, their most defensive lineman, a chance to make the sack. Outstanding coverage by Buffalo's defensive backfield. Well, you saw that uh, Miami has stopped the opposition only once all year goal to go. But the Dolphins are 7 for 17 inside the 10. Irving Fryer to the 4, maybe the 3-yard line. Thomas Smith on the coverage, 14 on the play. It's third and goal. He runs a delay outside. You might be able to see Fryer here, bottom part of the picture. He goes inside and then comes back outside, and he leaves Mickey Washington 25 in coverage. Enough to see, see if watch the delay inside. And the spin move, boy, oh, pushes off Mickey Washington. No wonder he's so far open. Actually, they spot it uh, generously to the two yard line. Third and goal. Throws at the last minute, almost intercepted, and that could have been a big one. Mickey Washington again, and that looked like 100 yards the other way. Phil Hansen was the man hitting quarterback DeBerg. But you don't normally see, and Don Jewell is going for it, Hugh Miller with the signal already, you don't normally see an experienced quarterback like Steve DeBerg throwing that ball so late down the middle. That's how desperate they are down 20 points here. Well, this could be the game. If Buffalo stops Miami, it uh, would certainly deflate the hopes of the hardiest Miami fan. The Berg, fourth and goal at the two. Touchdown, Keith Jackson. A flag is down, however, in the Miami backfield. The Berg saying it's against the Bills. No, it's against Miami. Bring it back. Well, now do you go for it again? Well, a field goal with 13-37. And it gets it up down by 17. Holding. Number 78 on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. All-pro tackle Richmond Webb. You don't hear his name much. That means he does a great job. But is, does he have Smith? No, he has Oliver Barnett, 77. A bull rush move by Oliver Barnett. I don't know where the hold is, but generally when there's that bull rush and they pull him down on top of him, they throw the flag. Only the third penalty against Miami, but it cost him a touchdown. Now third and goal from the 17. They get Smith offside, a free play to fade to Fryer. Beautiful defense again. Here to be the rookie Thomas Smith. Defense, number 78 offside, five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. That'll move the ball to the 12-yard line, fourth and goal. And they got to go for it again. Dick, I think you identified correctly. It is 28 Thomas Smith again. There's Bruce Smith in the neutral zone. I believe he, I think, is yelling more at his player than he is anybody else. Penalty from the 12 to the 7. Fourth and goal. Touchdown already nullified by Richmond Webb's holding call.
to Bird. Colton gets the touchdown. Home by Mark Ingram. A phenomenal effort by Steve DeBerg, throwing as he was going to the turf and gets Ingram for the score. The Dolphins are still alive. Yeah, we saw Gail Gilbert warming up on the sideline there for the Buffalo Bills. I think Jim Kelly's back in this ball game. Miami's not giving up. Stoyanovich for the point after. 47-34. 75 yards and 14 plays for DeBerg. Think of all this as a large block of ice. Think of this as a chip off the old block. Coors Light aged ice cold. So when you think of ice, think of the silver bullet. The only way to chill. Maybe you didn't know that the Mazda 626 comes with the best basic warranty in its class. But the people of Flat Rock, Michigan stand behind the car they built. And that's why we can too. Braun Flex Control. The first electric shaver with a pivoting head. Flex Control automatically adjusts to every contour of your face. Under the chin, under the lip, that tricky spot under your nose. You'll get the closest bronze shave yet. Flex control from Braun. The last word in shavers. Folks around Flat Rock, Michigan have their own way of conserving energy. They build the Mazda 626, and they build it so it gets the best mileage of any mid-sized sedan in America. So what do they do in your town? The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. By Braun Flex Control, the first electric shaver with a pivoting head that adjusts to every contour of your face. By Citibank Visa, now with your photo and signature on the front for greater security. Not just Visa, Citibank Visa. And by Coors Light, aged ice cold for that pure taste of the Rockies. Reach for the silver bullet, the right beer now. Beautiful scene, Joe Robbie Stadium, just outside of Miami. Steve DeBerg, almost 40. A couple of touchdown drives for DeBerg to cut the 47-20 lead to 47-34 with over 13 minutes left. And that was a remarkable effort by DeBerg on fourth and goal to get the touchdown to Ingram. We'll show it to you right after the kickoff. Buffalo, just in case, has its good hand people up, but it's Stoyanovich kicking it high inside the five to Copeland. And he doesn't make it to the 20-yard line. Good coverage by Daryl Malone. Now back to DeBerg's heroics. From behind the defense, you're going to see 91 Jeff Wright get by 69 Sims. DeBerg's not a particularly big kid or strong kid. Stays on his feet at 39 years old to make the completion to Ingram. And a monster slam dunk. And here's Steve DeBerg's reaction. There's not many quarterbacks are going to withstand that kind of hit and still get the ball off. At 39, it's remarkable. And still has a lot of boy in him. And listen to this crowd. Metzelar is the tight end with about a nine on the catch. As they continue to go to the big redhead, Chris Green makes the stop. 60 yards on six catches for Metzelar. When in doubt, go back to the basics of your game plan. And throughout this, there's Gary Stevens, quarterback coach, talking to Steve DeBerg. DeBerg told us several weeks ago he's learning this offense from Miami on the dead run. Gary Stevens teaching in the middle of the first fourth quarter. Pretty good numbers, 190 yards and a little over a quarter for DeBerg. Second and a short two for Kelly. 
Thomas battles to close to the 30. It'll be close to a first down. Jeff Cross early in on the hit. Now, if you could uh, get in that offensive huddle for Buffalo, Jim Kelly's going to be encouraging them, don't struggle for inches. Maintain possession. If you get hit, you know, don't do something foolish. Hang on to the football. They'll run the high percentage part of their offense here. Needless to say, the most that Buffalo has scored all year and the most that they have allowed, 25 by the Raiders in that uh, big upset up at Rich Stadium a couple of weeks ago, the most that Marv Levy's crew has given up. For Miami, they scored 41 against Indianapolis. That's their high. And the most that they had allowed prior to today was 27. Again, they're drawing plays in the dirt here in Joe Robbie Stadium for Steve DeBerg. 12 to go. Buffalo by 13. First down for Kelly. Hit on a Bruce Alexander blitz. Alexander coming in from a wing. And the ball flopped, fortunately for Buffalo, into an empty area. Here's Alexander coming on the blitz. You're right. They're just lucky that this ball doesn't fall in somebody's hand. Kelly does get it off just before Alexander makes the contact. Deflected by one of the linemen. Yep. Would have been uh, Craig Vesey. Reed with about seven on that catch. Alexander makes the stop. Third and three for Buffalo. Buffalo has made the plays. When it comes up to silencing the crowd, it's Alexander in the coverage. Reed with a good swim move over the coverage arm of Alexander. He looks healthy with that bad elbow there. That was not an easy catch. No. Buffalo, nine for 12 on third down. Another challenge at the 11.23 mark. Incomplete. Intended for Metzelar. Dwight Hollier made the hit. Stops the clock. 11 to go. And Hope. Hope is now higher in Miami. Dick, there was a lot of contact on that play. Metzelar's on your left. Hollier is right behind him. Oh, oh he's over the back. You bet he is. I mean, that's a two-shot foul in basketball. No penalty. McDuffie, dangerous, is back. Whoa! So high kick. McDuffie, wondering if it'll come down, alerts the first man. But he comes back and makes the tackle at the 19-yard line. Great effort by the rookie again, Thomas Smith. He's played well. Time out. People around Flat Rock, Michigan have a lot of reasons to be proud. One of which is... Let's go back to Miami. Mitchell, three possessions to start the half. Three touchdowns for Buffalo. DeBerg, two possessions. Two Miami yeah. touchdowns. Well, in... in uh... I think when you look at DeBerg, the first one that they went down the field with the passes to Terry Kirby, Buffalo went with a prevent. They went through that like nothing was there, and Buffalo has changed. There's still a lot of life left in this football game. 11 minutes to go, 13-point difference. And, and I think uh, what was interesting, Levy had to go to the pass in respect to what Miami yes. was doing. He, he didn't take a uh, duck-your-head-in-the-sand approach right. on that last possession. But the backside of that is, if the pass is incomplete, it stops the clock for Miami. Now it's up to the Bills defense as DeBerg starts at his own 20. Oh, Irving Fryer. That's two drops for Fryer in this second half. But I think he's looking back at DeBerg and saying, man, I'm only eight yards across the line of scrimmage. You can't hum it like that. Give me a chance. That was thrown just a little bit behind him. Yeah, I think DeBerg is saying to, to, to Irving, there, my, my bad there, my bad. Meanwhile, looks as if Houston is going to ring up number nine in a row going to San Francisco on Saturday. And you'll see that as part of our sports triple header on Christmas Day. And Cincinnati upsets the rain. And 
second and ten. DeBerg. Oh, his receiver had fallen and almost intercepted by Kurt Schultz. Schultz looking for his first pro interception. Fryer was the man who had fallen. Might have been a pretty good reason for Fryer going down. Uh, you see Daryl Talley, 56, coming out here. Well, that's an illegal chuck. And a chuck from, uh, from uh, Daryl Talley will put a lot of people on their keister, and that just disrupted the pattern. Just That's getting away with one right there, Daryl. Oh, DeBerg, 13 for 20 now in the second half. In relief. with a tackle. The Burt's magic still very much present. Oh, I thought Bruce Smith was going to get very close, and they're beginning to wear down the Buffalo Bills defense here. Hurry up offense for Miami. Comes it off the Kirby. Boy, you can see him protecting the ball, and yeah. it's another first down to the Buffalo 49. 10-15 to go. Tally slow getting up on the field. Man's going. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't either. 10.06 to go. It's not like Tally's trying to stop no, the clock. No. Nothing gained by Buffalo stopping the clock. A lot of uh, bills down on one knee. Fatigue could be a factor. The Cornhuskers battle Heisman winner Charlie Ward on the number two Florida State Seminoles. Tom Osborne faces Bobby Bowden, two coaching greats each in pursuit of their first national title. It's a primetime showdown for the national championship. The Federal Express Orange Bowl, New Year's Day on NBC. Welcome back to Joe Robbie. Ten minutes, six seconds left. Miami has cut the 47-20 deficit down by 14 and marching again. Appears to be that uh, Tally is okay. Left the field under his own power. And the 75-degree uh, heat and the length of this game may be taking its toll on Buffalo. The bird, no one there but Odoms. And Odoms, one step shy, looking for his ninth pick of the year. Uh, Ingram stopped the pattern. Started up the field. Uh, again, that's the communication. The communication. Here's Ingram, and he comes out here and up, but he stops the pattern. Uh, the bird throws it deep. A nice switching man-to-man -man defense there by the Buffalo Bills. Ingram realizes it. The bird did not. Second and ten. see a penalty no they say he was trying to pass the ball John Farella the second round draft pick of Nebraska appeared to have him for the sack and maybe it was whistled dead maybe that is the call not a grounding but a sack goes to Perella uh, they're putting different people in there to give some of this defensive line a rest Perella with a big bull rush over Sims all over Steve DeBerg and yes they do count it as a sack and the loss back to the 36 yard line 10 yards well, that's uh, better than a penalty. You get 10-yard loss and loss of down on Perella's play. And now in the hole, third and 20 is the bird. To the sidelines, caught by Tony Martin right at the sticks. At the 45, it'll be a yard shy of a first down. 19 on the play. Don Shula says go for it. They will not give in. Miami will not give in. It's just a simple square out at Smith on the on the coverage. Actually, he's right there, but Martha's looking back at the quarterback. Smith is not, therefore the completion can't be made. And how many times have the Dolphins gone for it now on fourth down? They went three times and scored on the third. Down on the goal line, here we are, fourth and one again. Buffalo is trying to spend a timeout. Uh, I think uh, everyone on the field will be thankful for Marv Levy's team <laughs> using a tee. 81 points have been scored. It's well under the record. In case you've been wondering, the all-time uh, NFL point total is 113. The Redskins and Giants in 1966. 
81 today. And the thing you won't believe is that at one time this Miami led 17 16. That's what you won't believe. Led 17 9. 17 9. And then trailed here in the second half in the third quarter 47 to 20. Will 47 points be enough for Buffalo? That <laughs> that's the amazing question. Yes. Remember they did miss an extra point. The very first possession by Buffalo. Kelly took him 75 yards and 10 plays and a Davis one yard touchdown and missed the extra point. Christie hooked it wide left. It's fourth and one. Shula has Jackson, Beatty, Byers, and Saxon. So he's going with a, to call the elephant, the heavy guy. Needing one. Buffalo looking for the run. And that's what it is to Byers. Gonna be close. Flags are down. He did not make it. He's knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Now the penalty flag. Byers thought he got a knock there. And the signal is against Buffalo for holding on defense on a run. Wow. They must have grabbed a face mask or they must have grabbed a pulling guard. Who Our called lead. that, he says. Holding. Number 90 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Come on, we're going to call it. First down. <laughs> Phil Hansen. <laughs> Nate Odom said... Excuse me, what kind of call is that? That is a uh, curious flag. A ball would have gone to Buffalo at the 45. He didn't get enough yardage. There's See. 90. Oh, he That's tackles the Widener. blocker Widener. Yeah. And Byers did not get enough for the first down. Hmm. Eight Buffalo penalties, all five yards until this one. And that's a five yard a defensive hole. Enough for the first down. It would have carried the first down. How Marvin. many times have you ever seen that call? Very seldom. Huh? Very seldom. And Mark Levy's saying, I've been around. You should have seen what we just showed you. I've been around since that uh, high school game <laughs> in, uh, was it, St. Louis a uh, hundred years ago. ago. And I've never had that called on me. St. Louis Country Day. The bird goes on top. Oh. Terrific stop as Fryer was open and Darby and Smith denied. Well, and I believe it was uh, Darby, was it Smith? He saved a couple of touchdowns, this rookie. Uh, DeBerg put it on the money. Fryer runs a great pattern. And you're going to see again Smith just get that arm out oh. there and walk, knock it away. What if he played baseball? He's made a couple of one-handers. He'd be great on the alley-oop pass, too. Great timing. Would that have been big? The Berg had already put it on the board. Oh. Second and ten. That's well ahead of Tony Martin. Third and ten. Well, they're certainly going for it quick here, aren't they? Eight. Miami's choice is get it in the end zone and get it in the end zone now. 821 left. Buffalo 47, Miami 34 in this battle for first place in the AFC East. Don Shula against Marv Levy. Levy has more wins against Shula than any coach in uh, 31 years against the mastermind of the Dolphins. 12 wins for Levy, 12 and 5 against Shula. Miami has now tried 51 passes. Whoop. Now, let's see if this is against Miami for drawing uh, Lodish and company offside. Encroachment, number 73 defense, contact by the snap, five yard penalty, repeat third down. The Berg uses a lot of body motion from that shotgun, and Lodish bites on it. The Berg really uses his shoulders and arms as he barks out the signal. And that's, if that happens, though, that's supposed to be on the quarterback. But, I mean, Lodis was, he was across there. He was going on sound, not on movement. Third and five at the 35 of Buffalo. Kirby in motion. 
Throw it to McDuffie. He's got a first down at the Buffalo 27. Seconds tick down to the eight minute mark. Miami hurrying to the line of Absolutely. scrimmage. Now they've got time. Sure. They don't need to hurry. Right. Oh. Throws it away, and he oh. might have heard someone coming on his backside. It was intended for Kirby. He was about to be leveled. But Dick, on the other side of the field, Irving Fryer was wide open. The guy who was coming quickly, number 78, Bruce Smith. But to the right side of DeBerg, Irving Fryer was standing wide open. DeBerg missed him. I don't think uh, Steve wanted to turn and look no, that no, side. No, <laughs> not recommended. <laughs> no. He's already got stitches in his chin. Doesn't need a redo. Playing at a level that would belie his nearly 40 years. Steve DeBerg, released by Tampa Bay at midseason. Oh! Intercepted. Nate Odoms, his ninth of the year. And Odoms tripped up at the 40-yard line as he was breaking for a touchdown. Kirby might have saved the score. It takes a long time for this to develop. There was a lot of pressure on the receivers down the field. He's throwing it for Terry Kirby. Right there, Nate Odom steps in front and makes the interception. Oh, they're just, Miami just not giving up, but they they did a good job there of, of trying to reroute the receivers, and DeBerg had nobody to throw to. So the Bills with another turnover, their fifth of this game. And uh, Keith Sims trying to make the tackle on Odoms is the injured player. Odoms with nine temporarily. Uh, that gives him the NFL lead. Trucks are a spiritual thing to me. Something you can depend on. It's just like, you know, my best friend, I guess you might say. Out on the ranch is where I'm at, and that's where I want the truck to work for me. I need a truck that's rough like I am. Introducing the all-new Mazda truck with a four-liter V6 and a soul to match. The new Mazda truck. Saddle up and let's go dancing. Mazda. It just feels right. Preferred Doc Cologne from Stetson. What preferred men prefer. You as a workmate on your next job. And you'll never want to work without it. Get the workmate only from Black & Decker. Welcome back from the airship Shamu, representing the SeaWorld Parks here in Florida, this overhead view. They're also in Texas, California, and Ohio. When not on tour, the Blimp Assist scientists studying endangered manatees and other marine animals along the Florida coast. Dick, as we watch this play unfold, watch the contact that takes place here. As Kirby comes in motion, you see Daryl Talley out there wreaking havoc. The intended receiver is Terry Kirby. Nate Odom makes the uh, reception, but again, watch Talley, 56. He's on Kirby first. That's legal there. That's legal. That's went five yards. Now, if the first one is legal, this next one cannot be. You can only have one. That's right. In five one yards. Person. One per person within five. In five yards. But the net result is... Nate Odoms continuing a brilliant year on defense. Nine picks. He was tied with Rod Woodson for the NFL lead. Watch the next hit on Tony Martin. If the first one's legal, the second one's more than five yards down the field. And then Thomas, now for the Bills. They'll try to run out the clock with seven and a half to go. Buffalo has used one timeout. Miami has all three. Thomas, uh, not much for average today. The defense of the Dolphins zeroing in on him. He's been a key in their game plan. But, but you know, you have the combination of him and Davis. And they've had a very good spot, very good day out of that running back spot for Buffalo. Davis for 50 yards on nine attempts. Thomas. Again, Hamden and Brian Cox again. Cox 
showing why he is one of the best in the league. And then uh, it looked like uh, Carwell Gardner. He's been in the uh, middle of things as much as Cox today, yes, hasn't he? Has. Boy, Brian Cox just stands that play up. Leads his team in tackles and forced fumbles. Has five sacks, four forced fumbles this year. Over 100 tackles. Look at him. Just fight off that. Wow. He just took Gardner, who was a 245-pounder, and just with one arm knocked him backwards. He actually got two. He was blocked initially by the tight end McKellars. Comes out in the flat and then takes on Gardner to stop the play. 6.15 to go. Seven defensive backs for Miami. Blitz. And there's Thomas. And he has the first down at the 49-yard line. J.B. Brown makes the tackle, and that's Kelly checking that defense Absolutely. and a good audible. He, he calls the audible perfectly. He has great faith in his offensive line to protect him. And again, here's the key man. All these defensive guys. Here's a blitz, too. Kelly reads it perfectly. The blocking is terrific. Metzelars picks up the blitzer, and there's number 34. My outlet. And now the clock spins to five and a half left. Buffalo 47, Miami 34. Dragging rights for the lead in the AFC East at stake. Thomas. A lot of work to gain one. Mike Golick and others in on the tackle. And uh, Brian Cox, a little uh, after the play, and that's not what Miami needs. Uh, Cox needs to get in control. Miami's calling timeouts here. They've got to use their timeouts on defense to conserve time for the offense, Dick. Cox having to be restrained by Greg Vesey. He has to be restrained by just about everybody on the team. Better watch out. Going to cost this team a penalty and maybe another ejection if you're just joining us. Miami's already lost two defenders. Starting nose tackle Chuck Klingbeil and backup defensive uh, back Bobby Harden were ejected earlier in this quarter. Chris Singleton has come in for Brian Cox, and look at this. They're just going to have to take half the team to get him off the field. Well, he won't stay on the sideline either. There's Lippert Hobley, an injured player on the sideline. Now he's yelling at Don Shula. I mean, Shula loves the positive side of his emotion, but dealing with the negative side can wear anybody out. There's Joe Green, Joe Green. now. Now they've got the man to control it. Mean Joe Green, the defensive coach of the Dolphins, a Hall of Famer. Now, now he's in the grass. Yeah. Most people, you know, as we're on the Dolphins, they kind of gently back away from Brian, allow Joe Green in there, you know? In the grasp and almost control. So Miami spends one of the three precious timeouts in this situation. It'll be second down and 10 when we resume at the 49 of the Dolphins. 13-point lead, Buffalo. They go home a winner. It'll be the defense. It'll be saluted up in western New York. Touchdown by Mickey Washington. Interception. End of the first half, 32 yards. Then Odom's a fumble recovery. Touchdown, 25 yards on the first play of the second half. Then an interception by Darby to the... Miami 19 led to another quick score, and then a Byers fumble to Miami 37, another Buffalo score. They filled up the big lead early in the third quarter to 47-20. Thomas, the carrier, cross the hit. There's the happy, there's the happy bench here in the Joe Robbie Stadium. We just saw the unhappy bench. Still uh, got yeah. Cox on the sideline. Now, we have not heard word that he's ejected, but whether... Uh, He's just going to stay on the sidelines till he cools down, or whether he's out for the game, we are yet to uh, discern. Well, that's four Super Bowls talking to him. A Hall of Fame defensive tackle. Brian Thomas should listen. Kelly downfield. Oh, in and out of the hands of Andre Reed. And that may have been that sore elbow. Reed won't let many of those slip through. Vesty Jackson was there in coverage. Alexander on the outside. I don't think anybody makes contact, no. The hand may have just deceived him ever so slightly. Bragg seemed to 
have a hand in the way. Anyway, Reed could not make the catch. Oh, Miami with 413 left. We'll get the ball again. McDuffie back at the 10 yard line. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Beautiful kick again. McDuffie lets it go. And it goes into the end zone. He did not call for a fair catch, so it was legal for him to bump Tasker. They'll start at the 20 yard line Saturday, Christmas Day. It starts. Houston Rockets, they're a couple of wins away from the best ever start with one loss. They're 21 and 1 against Charles Barkley in the NBA finalists from a year ago. The Suns have lost but four. That'll be followed. We'll be up at Candlestick. Warren Moon, Stephen Young, Buddy Ryan's defense, and they've been uh, the kingpin for the Oilers in their recovery. Nine straight wins against the Niners. That'll be at 5 Eastern time. And then. Orlando and Chicago, the three-time champion Bull Scotty Pippen, the main man now, and Smiling Shaq and the Magic will be there to challenge Chicago. So three big events on Christmas Day. Underneath the Kirby, good move again by the rookie. Oh, he's got people falling all over the field. And he's out of bounds at the 41, and that stops the clock, 355. Darrell Talley was the man in coverage. He's the guy who slipped it. Nine catches, 148 yards for Kirby. Coming right at you. Watch Darrell. Ooh, almost looked like Kirby sprained his ankle there when he turned around, but he looks healthy, carrying the ball in the right arm, the outside arm. Nice pickup. And a lot of good receivers in Shula's years here in Miami, but no one, no rookie. Uh, in fact, no running back in Miami has ever logged as many uh, receiving yards in a game as Kirby has today. He's down for the bird down the middle. Oh. complete. Nobody put their hands up. They Mark all thought Ingram it was, was yeah. the closest. They thought it was for the other guy. By the, by the way, is Miami approaching 60 pass attempts? I mean, we're very close here to 60 pass attempts, aren't we? 55? Goodness. Ross, Slingshot, Snyderman were out a couple of pencils on the paper today. Scott Mitchell started, did well until disaster struck in the form of Mickey Washington with a pass interception in the final minutes of the first half. And then a couple of interceptions and a fumble in the first three possessions of the second half helped Buffalo build that 47-20 lead. Now to Berg in relief. Underneath the Martin, the play that worked earlier, but not this time. Tripped up by Phil Hansen. Well, oh, they Buffalo did a great job there. They had Kelly on the outside, Bennett on the inside, and then Hansen makes the tackle. Martin had no place to go. Third and eight with time running against Miami. The bird to Ingram, and Ingram wrestled down shy of the first down at the 50. So now. It's a moment of truth again for Miami Whoa. with uh, 3.15 left, fourth and one. They've gone for it enough times on fourth down. I'm surprised they don't take one of their two timeouts here, Dick. It is incomplete, and Buffalo takes over on downs. Thomas Smith. There's a new name. They bench James Williams, and Thomas Smith playing as an extra defensive back has been outstanding this rookie today. He saved two touchdowns, and now he gives Buffalo the ball on down. This is just a hitch pattern run by Fryer, and again, he gets the hand in there. It's We know he's right-handed. We don't know a lot about him. We know he's right-handed. Yeah, they... Uh now to get a cast of that right hand, put it in Jim Kelly's uh, museum, that restaurant museum of his. He has been one of the Buffalo Stars today. If, if you'd have told me at 9.30 this morning that the score would be 47-34 either team, I'd have slapped you, Dick Enberg. <laughs> <laughs> exactly well, you do anyway. You'd have just been I harder. Do not. <laughs> but the score is 47-34. Ryan Cox is still on the sidelines as uh, Buffalo gives it to Carwell Gardner. The big back gets a couple to the 47-yard line, and Miami spends its second time out. Still no word as to whether he was, uh, uh, he was not ejected, no, apparently. I think he was just replaced, and Don Shula does a lot of teaching in a lot of different ways. And this may be a lesson for Brian Cox. Look, I love you, but you can't keep doing this. There has to be some control. You don't have enough energy to get mad at everybody between plays and take on everybody during the play. You got to settle one or the other. Yeah, some of his play today was absolutely brilliant. Yes, it was. But 
Kelly spinning all the time he can. Four, three, there's the play clock. And Kenneth Davis, a yard at best. As it ticks toward the two-minute timeout, uh, there's Miami's final timeout. They're going to spend it here and then use the two-minute timeout, hoping they can uh, stop Marv Levy's Buffalo Bills. Ryan taking the tape off of his hands. I mean, there's such a there's such a good side to this. Oh, there is. Well, I mean, they were all saying, you know, he's going to be the one who hosts those who don't have a chance to be home for Christmas on the 24th. He said, you know, it's, people think it's easy. He said, you know, we played on Thanksgiving Day. We're flying on Christmas Day. We're playing on New Year's uh, weekend. He said, you know, you don't uh, get a lot of holidays here, but uh, uh, untidy vacation for him late in this game. Yeah. And uh, personally, and there aren't a lot of people in the world who get to meet a Brian Cox personally in a football setting. He's a very engaging young man. He has a wonderful story to tell. And I think there's Joe Green talking in his ear. Says, son, I've been there. The quicker you learn this from me, the better player you're going to be, no matter how good you are. Boy, there's, uh, you can see a lot of energy still uh, bound up inside that young man. Following the action, uh, Jerry, Jim and Mike on? in the studio, the Head and Shoulders postgame report, all the scores and highlights of the early games today. Three, three, Third down and eight for Kelly. Oh, Craig Vesey jumping offside. Vesey playing for Chuck Flingbeil. Encroachment, number 94 on the defense. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. So for Miami, it'll be a game, should they lose this, of true repair for Don yep. Jula. And, and, and some things reoccurred today that have happened in the last couple of three weeks. They've had some uncovered blitzers on the quarterback. They put the ball on the ground. They've made mistakes throwing it, and the and the turnovers have uh, have resulted. There's Kenneth Davis looking for another first down that could all but steal it, and he has it at the 35-yard line. Stays in bounds. The two-minute warning comes up. Yeah, now the Bills know they lead 47-34. Really uh, given us a new sense of self. Because we those who make it possible here on NBC Sports, executive producer Tom Roy, coordinating producer of NBC's football is John Francis, and today's game was produced by John Francis, directed by John Gonzalez, associate director Al Szymanski, Jim Bells, our production associate, Tim DeKime, our omnipresent production manager, technical manager Alan Shear, technical director Mitch Geller. And all the other men and women, uh, Brian Cox isn't the only one who gives up a lot of holidays no. during the football season. Most of those names doing a great job today and uh, off working again on uh, the Christmas weekend. Joe Robbie Stadium just a little bit more orange than it was earlier in this game. The seats are now empty. Buffalo Bills. They saw Miami win up at Buffalo early last year. Then the Bills came down and... One and one in the playoffs here to advance onto the Super Bowl. Lost to Miami at Rich Stadium earlier this year, 22-13. That was in the game three. And they come back down and made it seven out of eight here in Miami. And it's the only game they'll uh, play all the regular season on grass. Yeah, that's something. And boy, Kelly said, oh, do I love that. Yeah. One game at least on grass. But, but you know, there's been a consistency of winning Buffalo over Miami, but in the last couple of years, there have been such emphatic wins. I mean, the Buffalo's emphatic win last year in the conference championship game. Miami's win emphatically in Buffalo early this season, and this is certainly an emphatic win. I mean, just take it to the other team. Well, and the impact now is uh, not only as Miami came in with a possibility of clinching a playoff spot today, and now with a loss today, I have to be concerned about will they be able yes. to make it to the playoffs, whereas Buffalo moves into the driver's seat in the AFC East with two games to go. And remember, Miami has two losses to the New York Jets inside the division. That hurts, too. So this win gives uh, the Jets some renewed hope. Head and shoulders post-game report coming up. Lots of scores and highlights for you. The uh, early scores of 
the second half of today's action as well as all the updates key plays of the finals and Miami will be four and four at home this year and five and one on the road that, that's amazing out. They've always done well late in the season down here in the heat and humidity. And Kelly now gives to Davis. Miami can't stop with the timeout. Davis wisely staying inbounds. That'll bring up third and long. Thanks to Terry Brumfield and Harry Von Suckel for their help here in the booth. Oh, there. Off to Candlestick Park on Saturday. To see the 49ers and Houston Oilers that game as the season developed became bigger and bigger and bigger and now uh, I guess legitimately a game that one could say could be a preview of Super Bowl 28. New England upsets Cleveland today. Oh my. Are you sure that Cincinnati did beat the Rams? Here's some of the uh, games that have started in the second half. The 49ers already leading by 14. Kenneth Davis wrestle down just shy of the 25-yard line brings up fourth down Cliff Odom making the tackle Odom playing with the Brian Cox on the sidelines 50 seconds remaining and a time called for the injury to Odom with 25 seconds on the clock It was a period if you take the last two minutes of the first half and the first four or five minutes of the second half where Buffalo scored four touchdowns. All off turnovers by Miami that decided this game. It was a gallant effort by Miami trying to rally behind the veteran De Berg, but too much ground to cover. So with the Buffalo win today, they uh, move a full game ahead of Miami and two in front of the Jets with the best record in the division. So all the numbers going for the Bills who have uh, the Jets at home next week and then finish at Indianapolis. Miami, on the other hand, has to go to San Diego next week and go to New England. So it's a much difficult, uh, more difficult trip for Don Shula. A game down to Buffalo and then two road games to finish the season. Uh, you could see the look on Don Shula's face there to the exasperation when he talked to us, I thought I got the feeling that he felt good. I mean, he wasn't happy that John Offerdahl wasn't there and Troy Lewis Vincent, Oliver he and Troy he really Vincent. said Troy Vincent. He said he just that was a killer injury for yeah. us. He said he's playing so well, and it was one of those where they had a special play in a reverse off the punt, and yeah. Vincent gets uh, hit on the knee. But but at the same time, I mean, he, I, I think he felt that with Scott Mitchell coming back, it was going to be a big lift to his football team, and even though they'd lost uh, two straight and almost three straight, as you documented in the first part of the of the broadcast he felt good about Mitchell returning that more things were going to happen but it was turnover city here in Joe Robbie today 50 seconds left Kelly can just spend 25 of those without snapping the ball it's fourth and one the Dolphins uh, minus three in turnovers today that means they're down a minus 11 in their last four games goodness those things are so unlike a Don Shula coach team. Clock down to 30. And to give to Davis a flag down. Davis has the first down. And check the penalty. Well, that will certainly games like this are quick flights back home. Mm. That time will go in minutes for yeah, a lot of Buffalo, Buffalo folks you know yes. go down as we uh, experienced in our hotel and I imagine there'll be a few folks up there greeting right. Buffalo back side nose guard on a defense five yard penalty first down so all uh, Jim Kelly has to do now is take one snap and kneel and the Buffalo Bills go to ten and four and Kelly had another solid game and this is a man that uh, as is the case of so many, a lot of aches and pains, a lot of injuries. He said, you got to protect me, and they did. He yes, didn't they did. take many hits today, did he? They control the game here in Miami the way Miami controlled the game up in Buffalo. Wasn't sacked one time. Right. He did get knocked down a couple times, pressured. And, and these Buffalo Bills have more than one gear, and we just saw another gear today. Marv Levy's. Irrepressible Buffalo Bills. 
A lot of folks have tried to count them out, but there they are in first place again, 10 and 4, with a 47-34 win. Don Shula losing to Levy for the 13th time in their meetings. 13 and 5 is Levy against the great Shula. 47-34, the Bills are the winners. We'll be back. Head and Shoulders post-game report coming up.